This is the Discover Card Countdown to Green as we get ready to go racing. With the cheers from Indianapolis still echoing across the racing world, the Winston Cup Series is ready to attack the road course at Watkins Glen. Brickyard 400 champion Kevin Harvick became an instant star when he took the seat of the Lake Dale Earnhardt. Last Sunday, he followed in Earnhardt's footsteps, standing in victory lane at Indianapolis. Now the chase for the Winston Cup comes to New York. It's a new week, and for the stars of NASCAR, another challenge. Perhaps racing's greatest challenge is trying to replace a legend. Anything we can do uh, that Dale Earnhardt did is an accomplishment. Or maybe it's winning the race for respect. I didn't need to race. I lived off of twenty thousand dollars a year and, and working at the dang uh, Camelot Fun Park. This time, the reward for professional patience is a part and the heart of the Brickyard. And the California kid, Kevin Harvick, wins the tenth Brickyard 400. This time, the reward was a simple kiss. It's a new road to the championship, one that reminds us of the win and the wine from California. I think Rob has got a little problem going faster under caution than he does in the green. The easiest way to say is that trophy's still sitting on the shelf over there. Today, NASCAR comes to New York State with fresh memories of two California kids that know the way to victory lane. The Winston Cup Series is on the road at Watkins Glen. It's NASCAR on NBC, presented by Subway. Hi, everybody. Our NBC race family welcomes you to New York. I'm Bill Weber on the wagon right alongside Pitt Road. I'll tell you right off the top, we are in the hurry up. The forecast is for a better than 70% chance of rain, possibly heavy rain, by mid-afternoon right here at the Glen. The start of this race has been pushed up to 1.33 Eastern time. That's when it will go green. That's about 30 minutes from right now. 18 drivers broke the old track record in qualifying, led by four-time Watkins Glen winner Jeff Gordon. He's with Marty Snyder. And Bill, Jeff Gordon starts first. The last time he did that at Watkins Glen, he finished first. Jeff, is a car good enough to do that again today? Uh, it's definitely good enough. It's a great car. Um, you know, Friday was really awesome for us, but uh, that was only half the battle. I mean, we definitely had to work hard to get the balance right for, for the race, but I, I think we're gonna be in good shape if we can just keep it up front, and it takes a lot to do that. Going for his eighth career road course win, Dave Burns. Marty, coming up through the S's with Rusty Wallace, looking for his third win here. Rusty, is it possible today? Oh, heck yeah, it's possible. We got a good car. We're, I'm real happy with it right now. We get this race started, get it sorted out, and see what happens. All right, riding along here with the Fighting 427. He starts fifth today to Matt Yoakum. Last Sunday was Kevin Harvick's biggest win of his career at Indy. How was this week, Kevin? Uh, the week was pretty cool. Uh, just to take in what we'd done and accomplish as a team was was really neat for me personally and the whole RCR organization. So it was a uh, it was a lot of fun and I got sick during the week, so I didn't get to enjoy it as much as I had and, and really uh, feel a lot better today. So looking forward to what the GM Goodrich car can do today at uh, Watkins Glen here. No bricks, just curves here at the Glen. He starts 11th. Bill? Everybody getting a ride, Matt. Here's a look at the NASCAR Top 10. Kenseth has the largest lead in the championship standings since the season finale of 2001. Michael Waltrip jumps up to 5th. 158 points separate 4th and 9th. Rusty back in the Top 10, 25 points ahead of 11th place, Robbie Gordon. Ryan Newman had a scary moment in practice here on Friday. This frightening crash. Ryan was not injured and was very frustrated with the response time of the track safety team and said once they did get their quote, they didn't have a clue what to do, unquote. It took one minute and 22 seconds for the first crew worker to reach the car. Ryan said he will be vocal about the situation because it's his butt in the car. Safety and medical teams next. Discover Card Countdown to Green is brought to you by Discover to Go. It pays to discover. By Subway, fresh made sandwiches on fresh baked bread. Subway, eat fresh. And by Auto Light Spark Plugs. It's time to change your plugs. Once again this season, the racing has been punctuated by hard crashes, violent flips, and fire. 
It's after the crash that the real race begins, the one to aid the woozy and the wounded. Recent wrecks have renewed an old question, one we asked you to think about at Daytona. Should NASCAR travel its own safety and medical team? Wally Dollenbach's father was instrumental in developing the safety and medical team that is used by the Open Wheel Racing Series, CART. It is a system that Wally is very familiar with. Today, he looks at the most important team at any track, the safety and medical team. There's a lot of things that NASCAR could do to give the drivers a little more safety. When you need them, it can be as serious as life and death. We've had problems with safety trucks not getting there. Drivers getting upset because they're way tardy and uh, sometimes underqualified. Can it be better? Yeah, it can definitely be better. In NASCAR, each track provides local medical personnel that work under the supervision of NASCAR. NASCAR believes that if track medical personnel are proficient for Winston Cup, then when one of their other 10 divisions visit the same track, they will get the same attention the Cup drivers would. Our philosophy has been, even at the highest level, the Winston Cup Series, is that in partnership with the racetrack, the racetrack's responsibility is to provide a professional, adequate, medically trained, credentialed, a uh, group of medical uh, service people to service the events. And we feel like that's the best way for NASCAR to do it. Other major forms of car racing have chosen a different way to care for their drivers. The NHRA, IRL, and CART all have safety teams to travel with their series to each racetrack. Everything is coordinated just like a football team. We practice together day in and day out. Everybody learns about the race cars and about the racing drivers, what their little particular problems may be in life, and how to deal with each one at a scene. When you see the, the, the faces that you know that they, they, I mean, they're your friends. I mean, they're part of car community. Uh, they know their business and they know exactly what they do. And so when they come to see you at the race car, I mean, it, it feels a huge relief. We have a relationship with our drivers. Uh, the drivers know us by name. Uh, if you wake up in a bad situation, would you rather wake up to someone you don't know or someone who you know and you know what their responsible care level is going to be, it puts you at a relaxed level, knowing you're in the right hands. As big and tough as we're supposed to be, when we're injured, you know, seriously injured, we still feel like little kids. And to be looking at someone that you know is a lot more comforting than looking at a bunch of strangers, you know, when it feels like your whole world's come crashing down around you. My opinion of, of a safety team is that uh, they need to travel with us. They need to know the drivers, to know the seats, to know the cars, to know the fuels, to know the, the racetracks, uh, all kinds of different, uh, I guess, variables that certain safety crews uh, miss because they don't get to experience it. Hart and its drivers believe their traveling safety team is the primary reason that Alex Zanardi survived his horrific crash two years ago in Germany. What they did for my, for my good friend Zanardi, too, I mean, they saved his life on the track. I don't think he would have made it if we didn't have those guys there that were, you know, that, that quick in acting. We were able to get to the, the scene and immediately see what was wrong, which is he had bilateral uh, amputations. His legs were gone uh, and he was hemorrhaging to death. Uh, we were able to stop that hemorrhage, get IVs started, and get him off the track in a very short period of time with an injury that in a civilian population is a high mortality rate injury. Those guys saved Alex's uh, life because he was losing so much blood uh, at such a high rate that uh, if it wasn't for, for their techniques, Alex wouldn't be with us here. The safety team um, that we have in, in NASCAR and Winston Cup Racing is light years ahead of where it was five or ten years ago. It's still not uh, quite where some of the other racing series are. But I don't want to be where we are two years from now. I want to see a continuing improvement every day looking at how can we do it better, how can our rescue personnel that are at the racetrack do it better, how can the teams help. We need to always be looking at how to make our deal better. So we feel like our way of doing it works for us. Uh, certainly other forms of sports, other forms of motorsports can do it differently, but we feel like the way we do it works for us. And when we come back to Watkins Glen, we'll get Wally's thoughts on how to put the best safety team on the track. You're watching NASCAR on NBC.
The Discover Card countdown to green continues from Watkins Glen, and we will see the green flag at 1.33 Eastern time. That's about 20 minutes from now. We just saw Wally Dollaback's piece on the safety and medical teams in various forms of motorsports. He's standing by to call today's race with Alan Bestwick and Benny Parsons. Wally, your thoughts on how to put the best safety team on the track? Well, Bill, I think NASCAR's idea with, you know, training the uh, at the track safety team is a great idea. This way, when the other divisions come that r race in NASCAR, they're getting the best attention. But I also think NASCAR is the best racing in the world, and I think it should have the best safety program in the world. And I think they should... Go ahead and add that traveling safety team. I think, it, I think it would benefit everybody. Why not have the best of both worlds when you do that? Okay, Wally, thanks a lot. Enjoy the race. He has two second-place finishes here, by the way, but today he's racing with us. We'll continue our Discover Card countdown to green from Watkins Glen in just a moment. Welcome to Watkins Glen, New York for NASCAR on NBC, presented by Subway, the 22nd race of the season. Let's go trackside and join the pre-race ceremonies. Ladies and gentlemen, please continue standing for the invocation from MRO. Here's Eric Quinn. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we are so thankful for your grace and your mercy that you show us every day. We ask God that you'd be in this place today, that you'd protect these drivers and these crewmen as they compete. We ask God that you'd be with the officials, give them wisdom as they watch over the competitors. I ask God for these fans, that they would get a special blessing today, that you'd watch over them, give them a great day here, and help them to get home safely. And I thank you for it. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, ladies and gentlemen, to perform our national anthem, would you please welcome Bluegrass Vocalist of the Year, Rhonda Vincent. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hail at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through job is to keep all of us out of the kitty litter this afternoon. Alan, Wally, and Benny. Trying to regain our composure. Those fireworks from the National Anthem, they were a little close here. The things we're going to talk about today we don't normally speak of in a race on Sunday. Let's see, we got a bus stop. 
gravel traps, wheel hop, <laughs> and backwards pit stops. Molly, things are just different here. Yeah, but this place is fun. I mean, this is a racetrack that you charge the corners, you get to downshift, you get to stand on the gas, you get to hang it out. There's a lot of drivers here that love running this place. There's a lot of guys that don't. But like you said, there's going to be a lot of guys that get in trouble with this wheel hop because that's when you got too much rear brake. Watch Dale Jr. Watch the rear of the car here. The rear is actually bouncing off the ground, and that happens for one of two reasons. One is you have too much rear brake, or BP, if you downshift and not slow the car down with the brakes, you'll get that wheel hop. And these guys today have got to stay on the racetrack. If they expect to win, they've got to stay on the pavement. Yesterday in practice, guys. Dale Earnhardt Jr. in the gravel. Greg Bibble starts on the outside pole. He's in the gravel. And folks, it takes at least one lap for the safety crews to come out and get you. In last year's race, Matt Kenseth loses control. Wheel hop, too much rear brake, whatever, for whatever reason, he's in the grass. And once again, it takes at least one lap for the safety crews to come out and get you. And that's a lap you can't make up here. It's amazing working with a professional. He never missed a beat when those jets just went over our head. You and I were ducking. They had, it's a good thing they had the tape on camera. And we've also talked about rain and the possibility of threatening weather. NASCAR and Goodyear have wet weather tires here. The team's given inst extensive instructions this morning on what to do if bad weather comes. Will we see the first ever competitive NASCAR laps in the rain? We might. NBC Sports welcomes you to Watkins Glen, New York, as Subway presents NASCAR Winston Cup Racing. Today, some 100,000 fans are in and around the Watkins Glen road course to see who'll take the checkered flag first. Cars are on the track, beginning their parade and pace laps. Budweiser, the official beer of NASCAR, proud to sponsor the Bud Pole Award given to the fastest qualifier in his NASCAR Winston Cup race. Jeff Gordon with his second Bud Pole Award of the season in qualifying Friday in new track record fashion. Since 1979, Anheuser-Busch has awarded more than $8 million as title sponsor of NASCAR's Pole Award program. 43 drivers set to go today at the Glen. Jeff Gordon sharing the front row with Greg Biffle, best qualifying by a rookie this season. Tony Stewart, row two, not going to be there for long. We'll tell you about that in just a second. See Matt Kenseth, Kurt Busch back in row four. Morris Sid comes in to drive the 0-1 car this week. Indy winner Kevin Harvick there in row six. Ryan Newman finished second here a year ago, and there's Robbie Gordon. Pretty, uh, pretty good favorite on a lot of people's minds to win this race today. And Ron Fellows, a lot of folks talking about him in the one car. Yep. Jimmy Johnson, another car that will have to go to the rear of the field and engine change this morning. There's Bill Elliott. Way back in row 13, Ricky Rudd, considered one of the better road course racers in NASCAR, but he's got a lot of track position to make up. And down into provisional land, Sterling Marlin, Jimmy Spencer. They don't consider road racing to be among their favorite pursuits. While well, they talked about some of them enjoy it, some of them don't, that's two that really and truly do not enjoy coming here. Do not. Moving to the back, all because of engine changes. Morris said Jimmy Spencer, most notably Tony Stewart, who was qualified in row two. It's going to be fun to watch him coming up through the traffic. And he's got a very good race car. 11-turn course here at Watkins Glen. Start finish line, the cars go down in turn one. A good place to pass. And here, get it through this corner, through the S's, down the long backstretch is really important because here is a good place to pass. Do the inner looper, bus stop, some folks are calling it. There's a carousel up to another spot, Wally, that's... Yeah, that area, turn 10, guys, and turn 1 is where we see a lot of that wheel hopping going on. So we'll watch those two areas. That's where a lot of guys wind up in the kitty litter or the gravel is what we're talking about. And those are safety traps put in to keep the cars, to slow the cars down before they hit the barrier. They do a very good job at that, slowing them down. You know, Wally takes pretty great pride in trying to rattle and scare the passengers in his Wally's World Mountain Dew Dodge, but with the help of Robbie Gordon and a rigged coin toss, today we turn the tables. I'll say it was rigged. I know, Robbie, but I beat you at Daytona. Yeah, but at Phoenix, I was on you, and I handled it. Back in 86, though, I beat you at Watkins Glen. Yeah, you jumped the curb and passed in the grass. 
Robert and I are talking about some great races we had, not at the racetrack, to and from the racetrack in rental cars. But how about you taking a ride with me in my Mountain Dew car? Last time I rode with you, it wasn't very pretty. All right, Let's we'll, do, for it. we'll do the fair thing. All right. You call it in the air. Tails! Woo! Got to call it. You got to call it in the air. <laughs> You gotta call it in the air, not on the ground. <laughs> All right, Robbie, here we go. This is, uh, I don't know what I'm thinking doing this, but. <laughs> oh, on the right. Oh, you missed that apex. <laughs> go, baby. Flat through the S's. Whoa, change direction. Oh, yeah, a little bit of a push. Now, a brave man would have went through there flat. <laughs> Go for it. Alright. Yeah, I think with a little bit of practice, you'd be really good at road course driving. <laughs> I think we should have two people at every race. I did too. That was fun. Actually, that was a lot of fun. You know, I was sitting there, it was funny, the guys that prepare the car like, you know, tell Robbie. Tell Rob, I said, listen, you can tell Rob whatever you want. He's going to drive the race car. <laughs> Parade and pace laps take a long time here at Watkins Glen. So we'll take a break. Come back for the start in just a minute. NASCAR Winston Cup Racing from Watkins Glen, presented by Subway, is brought to you by Napa Auto Parts. Napa, get the good stuff. By Subway, fresh made sandwiches on fresh baked bread. Subway, eat fresh. By Ford, if you haven't looked at Ford lately, look again. And by Tropicana Pure Premium, nothing but the juice. Tropicana Pure Premium. At Watkins Glen, New York, getting set for the start of Sirius Satellite Radio at the Glen. That is the name of today's race. See the orange car on pit road, Tony Stewart. Came down the pit road on the pace laps. What was that all about? I guarantee you, one of our crack pit reporters will be informing us momentarily. Well, he had to start at the rear of the field, so... It's also one of the crew members dive inside the right window of the car, so maybe Tony's radio or some of the safety equipment wasn't exactly to his comfort, but we'll find out in a minute. By the way, it was not a strategy thing because you're not allowed to add fuel to the race car until the leader has completed one green flag lap on the racetrack. See, I told you it happened, Bill. Yeah, they claim he just came down pit road because he had to get to the end of the field, the tail end of the field for the engine change. So uh, they did send a crew guy in the car, but if he did anything, they're not telling. Okay. But it is going to be fun to watch Tony Stewart come up through traffic. Let's talk about some others that's going to be fun to watch today. Marty? Alan, Robbie Gordon's team made a change this morning based off what happened here last year. They felt like they were too slow on the restart. So today they have a new gear in the car, which will help launch Robbie when the car is going slower. That will help on restarts. It will also help here on pit road. But it will hurt him in turn one, where Robbie has used first gear for many years to pass people. He will not have the benefit of that today. If he can work with it, it might help to get him to victory lane. Dave Burns. Marty Boris said, told me this morning that qualifying 10th would allow him the opportunity to cruise. Well, they had to change the motor this morning, and he has to start at the back of the field. He said, now I've got to drive aggressively all day long. Good thing is, Boris said it's very good at that at the road course. Matt? Dave, NASCAR's lap tracker system had Tony Stewart as having one of the best overall race cars in the final practice session. Then his Achilles heel in 2003 reared up again. Engine woes. In fact, his team built a brand new engine with a slightly different engine configuration back at a shop in Huntersville, North Carolina. They put it on a plane, flew it up to Watkins Glen. It's in the race car now, and Tony says it'll be just like his old days in USAC. He'll have to have a very fast race car and drive it all the way to the front, Bill. The 36 Winston Cup races, this is the only one where the teams pit backwards. What I mean by that is normally it's driver's side or left side to the wall. Here, it's the right-hand side to the wall. But while the guys are pitting backwards, the crew chiefs are running the race backwards. You take the number of laps you got, then how far you can go on fuel, maybe 35. Then you multiply that by two, that gets you two stops at 70. You take the 70 away from 90, you got 20. And that's the lap you should probably pit on, if that's your strategy. But if there's a lot of yellow then maybe you can stay out longer, then you might be able to stretch it to 40, half is 45. Of course, if another caution comes out, say about lap 54, you might stop then, see if you can stretch it to the end. It's very confusing here at Watkins Glen. You were watching Meet the Press this morning, weren't you? Tim Russert's my hero. There you go. I knew there was a flashback there somewhere. <laughs> Coming to the green. And you see, on the as the cars are following the Dodge truck, on the right of this picture, you see Greg Biffle. 
Normally, Jeff Gordon would be there, but the pole sitter of the fastest car gets to choose which side he wants to start on. Going down in turn one, he needs to be on the inside, so wisely, he chose the right side of the grid. 90 laps around the 2.45 mile course today makes up the distance as the pace truck heads for pit road. And we are set to the green flag here at Watkins Glen. Kevin Harvick, three, how about four wide into turn one? Oh, almost contact between the 16. Oh, who's there around? was contact, Jeff yes, Gordon, the leader. I think maybe he and Biffle made contact getting down in the corner. Remember in New Hampshire, they had a little confrontation about Gordon and Biffle getting back on the lead lap? Wow. They said it was settled. Maybe it's just flared up again accidentally. Jeff Gordon has continued away. The track is clear. We stay under green. The inner loop, or the bus stop, as some people call it. gravel pit it becomes a, a rest area <laughs> yeah. pretty deep pretty deep rest area here's the out oh, kyle petty in trouble at the inner loop that's on the outside of the track so he didn't even get through the corner and he got stuffed into the styrofoam big yeah, the whole front the whole front right side rear He's full course caution is out as they complete lap one Let's take a look what happened down here in turn one Yep, Gordon definitely got booted. And it wasn't like that he was really slowed down at that point either. Getting through the corner pretty good. They got flat out on the gas to keep that thing from getting off into the gravel trap. Yeah. I'll tell you what, he did a fantastic job in keeping that car not to not get stuck in the gravel. Like I said, he got to stay on the pavement, and so did Jeff Gordon. Never see. Still there outside, watch 24 spot. Clear, clear, clear all around. Nice and smooth, buddy. It's just you. All right, so that was the first end of the opening lap doubleheader. Now we go to the other end of the racetrack in the inner loop. Those four turns that Kyle Petty did not come out of successfully. Here it comes. Wow. Look at that. And that's a slow part of the racetrack. Yeah, I can't figure that one out. I wonder if Sterling Marlin got Ooh, No, that's that on the pipes. Good. No, that's not good at all because the smoke, when it comes out the tailpipe, tailpipe like that, terminal. Terminal. Matt? Radio conversation between the team and Sterling. They've told him to take the car to the garage to see if there's anything they, do, they can do to try to fix the car. So under caution very early here at Watkins Glen, two different incidents on the first lap of the race, including that one involving Kyle Petty. Back at Watkins Glen, still under caution. Take a minute to tell you that Kurt Busch's team won the McDonald's drive through pit crew championship at Indianapolis. Their car spending the least amount of time on pit road among participating teams. 20 grand to them for last weekend, and Michael Waltrip's crew continues to lead the season long standings for the $200,000 top prize. Big money, $200,000 to be split amongst the crew. Mm -hmm. Clean it up out on the back stretch where Kyle Petty got into the styrofoam blocks and scattered those safety panels uh, a good bit. Meantime, on pit road, Bill, here's Jeff Gordon. Yeah, and he's been told by one of his spotters around the track that the car looks to be in good shape, but they want to come down pit road anyway. It does have some damage on the right rear. They look underneath to make sure everything looks okay. This basically is to pull the fenders away from the tires, give him four new tires, top it off with fuel, and send him back out. Robbie Loomis told Jeff and the crew on the radio, remember how we struggled last week? at Indianapolis before the race and had a good finish. We can do it again this week. It was on course contact with Greg Biffle. Here's what Biffle said to his crew after the incident. No, I mean, if it's any consolation, this tailor spotter, I just couldn't get stopped. I was sliding the tires. I mean, I feel terrible. And that'll happen. I mean, you know, you're on your first lap there. You do, you don't have any heat in the tire, so that's, you know, a pretty good possibility. You had the fr the fronts locked up, possibly, and slid down in there. And you don't have any heat in the brakes as well. But again, you, yeah, 
Still, still got to get stopped. Still got to get stopped. Still got to get stopped. The arresting officer would say, you make contact from behind. That's right. You get the ticket. Yep. Back straight away now. Another look at that exit of the inner loop wreck involving Kyle Petty. There you see Kyle's car being worked on in the garage. And a lot of damage to the machine. Watch the yellow car on the left of the screen. Uh, it appears that they made contact right there, BP, and it just knocked the 45 car to the left. And like you said, it's a slow part of the racetrack, but it's not that slow. Man, it looked like they just touched wheels, locked wheels, and he was not able to turn it. Marty? Very hard, very early accident for Kyle Petty. I just asked him if he wanted to talk. He said, I would rather not. I said, what happened? He said, I think it's pretty obvious. You guys have a lot of cameras. That we do. So I think by saying that, he says that he made contact with another car. On further review, yep. the call on the track stands. <laughs> yeah. So uh, let's take a break here. Boy, we've had some things happen in these opening laps, haven't we? Greg Biffle leads at Watkins Glen. Watkins Glen International and NASCAR on NBC giving you our NASCAR Busch Series update. No race this weekend for the Busch Series. Close championship, though. They take it to Michigan International Speedway next Saturday. You'll see it on TNT. Craftsman Truck Series raced Friday night in Nashville. Congratulations to Carl Edwards, his second straight win and third of the season. He's the guy that does the backflips off the back of the vehicle when he wins. You might say he was kind of flipped out by things Friday night. Very close championship there for the Craftsman Trucks as well. How about it, Marty? Uh, BP Wally, uh, I'm no expert, but I, I don't think that looks very good to you. That'd be the spark plug out of Sterling Marlin's car, and uh, obviously it's terminal. Did it give any, any indication uh, early on that it was going to let go, Sterling? No, didn't do nothing. Really, everybody was really jump, jumbled up, uh, you know, too wide through the S's, and, and uh, down the back straight, we started missing and uh, made it through the wreck with Kyle and come up off uh, whatever that corner is. <laughs> and it uh, really started smoking coming back, so it looks like... Uh, Push rod jumped out or rock, broke rock arm or something. Bios then hit the piston, so it's not real good. That is called detonation, guys. So Sterling Marlin going to be the first driver out here at Watkins Glen today. Five ringers in the field. Drivers who come from road racing series and road racing backgrounds, not normally on the Winston Cup circuit. You'll hear us talk a lot about them today. Let's meet them. Hi, I'm Ron Fellows from uh, Toronto, Ontario, Canada. Hi, my name is Johnny Miller. I'm from Piney Flats, Tennessee. Hi, I'm Scott Pruitt. Two IMSA championships, two Trans Am championship. PJ Jones. I've run in uh, midgets, sprint cars, silver crown, Indy lights, cart. Hi, I'm Boris Shedd. I have a unique career. I race everything. <laughs> <laughs> and we will talk about those drivers throughout the day. Remember the end of last year's race here where Tony Stewart had that late restart? They moved the restart point way up the track. You saw the new restart line there. Here we go. Oh, three, man. four wide. Look at him. Found out Bobby Labonte way over trying to make it three wide down in the corner. Yeah. Gets on the inside of Robbie Gordon. Greg Biffle leads. Mark Martin is second. Kurt Busch is third. Dale Earnhardt Jr. is fourth. And Rusty Wallace is fifth. And the big mess from sixth on back that they've now sorted out into single file. Yeah, you really have to be single file up through the S's here because cars that run side by side through the S's are going to lose a lot of time. They're going to lose a lot of speed. You can't run through there flat out when you're side by side. Here comes Ryan Newman. He's trying to get by in the inner loop. The bus stop. On board with Kurt Busch, our fourth place car. This is an important corner here, too. This has you got to really carry a lot of momentum through here. Boy, Junior got a great restart. He start, restarted in fifth spot, has moved up to third. Just a couple of quick updates. Uh, Robbie Gordon has moved up to eighth. Jeff Gordon, after the pit stop, is back in 36th. Tony Stewart also came in, topped off his fuel under that caution. He restarted 37th. Jimmy Johnson, Jimmy Spencer, Steve Park, and Paul Menard also pitted under the caution, and they fill out the rest of the running order. Here is where one of the best spots, Dale Jr., perfect right there on Mark Martin. Very difficult guy to pass on a road course. You really got to stand on the brakes going into turn one if you're going to pass cars. So you have to dive in there about a car length deeper than the next guy. Get on the brakes, but you have to match everything up. You've got to match the gears when you downshift. You got to make sure not to hit the brake too much that you lock up the rears or the front, depending on where you're the bias. Good pass. Come on, Bill Weber. 
I just wanted to update Mark Martin's situation. Off to a good start. This team came here and tested, had an excellent test. In fact, was the fastest in testing. Mark also drove Biffle's car a little bit. Greg was very good in that test as well. But when they went to Sonoma and tested, the six team felt very confident that they were going to be good when they went back but they weren't that good. So here, they built in some flexibility, came here with three different setups. They found one that Mark liked best in the car, and off to a good start so far. Three-time winner at this track. Yeah, 15 Winston Cup starts at Watkins Glen for Mark Martin, 11 top five finishes. Where did this road racer come from in, in that eight car? Dale Earnhardt Jr., you would not think of him as a road racer, but he ran exceptionally well out at Infineon Raceway, and look at him, gaining on Biffle as he goes down to turn one for the lead. Marty, what's up with the eight car? Ah, BP, don't be so fast to say he's not a road racer. Remember, he does have a NASCAR Bush Series win here at Watkins Glen, as a matter of fact. And a couple of years ago, they came here to test with Ron Fellows at his side, and it really helped him out. He learned a lot of things about how Fellows ran this racetrack, and that's helped him out in his line. During the test here, they were very solid, very good. In fact, Mark Martin said the best guy in the test, other than what we had, I think was Dale Earnhardt Jr. Yeah, I think Jr. knows what he's doing here on these road courses. I think where he's been having some problems lately is when he's downshifting. Uh, he's, he gets into a situation where we talk about that wheel hop, and you've got to hit the brake and slow the car down initially and then downshift. And I think what Dale tries to do, he tries to slow the car down when he's downshifting, but he doesn't have that brake pedal matched up yet. Sometimes that's what gets him in trouble here. Junior got off into the gravel trap yesterday during Winston Cup final practice in that corner he just came through a second ago. Clean the gravel all out of all the various parts and pieces on the car, but they felt pretty confident today when I talked to them this morning. Closing on Biffle pretty quickly. Oh, he sure is. That last lap by, he was about one second faster than Greg Biffle. Here comes Ron Fellows in the Pennzoil car, picking up a spot on Matt Kenseth there. And now looking out for Jeff Gordon and Tony Stewart. There's Gordon and there's Stewart. 20, uh, excuse me, 32nd and 33rd positions. Tony Stewart defending winner here at Watkins Glen. And this is Boris Set we ride with in the 0-1. And Boris had the better that throttle just a little bit. He can't run there through from flat, but Jeff Gordon was able to run through there on the gas more. You can see how much ground he made up. Trying to move over, get out of the rear window. Rearview mirror, Morris said, hoping he'd back off, give him the spot. Did not happen. Hey, Gordon's car looks really good right now. He's got fresher tires than these guys. Yeah, that's true, too. Stopped and made the pit stop there. Looks like Ricky Craven may be about to lose a lot of guys, a lot of positions here. As some of these guys start moving through them that have the fresher tires. Talk with Boris earlier in the weekend about coming in here as a ringer, an outsider. He said he doesn't want to interfere with the championship, but he's certainly going to give it his all to win. Well, I mean, I certainly wouldn't want to, you know, make some enemies and take out Matt Kenseth or Tony Stewart or somebody like that, but, you know, I am hired by MB2 Motorsports, and to them, you know, the points for everybody at, uh, you know, USG Sheetrock brand and the U.S. Army and their owner's points, it's important, and they're spending a lot of money, so, you know, I can't lay down and let people buy it. You know, I'll drive it 100% at all costs. At all costs. And right now, he's doing a nice job. He was able to get by Ricky Craven. He's driving there, you know, for the team. But let me tell you something. He's driving this race for Boris Ed. And if he can win this race and beat all those guys, then, you know, Clear, it looks good. That's, uh, that's saying he did something. So believe me, he's, he's trying to beat these guys in the worst way. Boris Ed is from Carlsbad, California. He's 40 years old. He won the Trans Am Series Championship, World Racing Series, last year, driving a Penos Esperante. This is his ninth career Winston Cup start. He'd like nothing better than to be a full-time Winston Cup driver. He wants to be an oval driver, not just a road course driver. They may run some ARCA series races with Boris later this season to continue that pursuit. Where, where the road course guys had the advantage. We watched him just make a move, and Robbie's going to make a move probably in the inner loop here on, on Casey Mears, is the braking, because there is a knack to downshifting and braking and doing it quickly. And that's all these guys do that drive road courses. They do it, and they're very good at it, where a lot of the cup guys only do it twice a year. 
speaking of ringers, while we were talking about uh, Boris Shedd, how about our singular race talk poll question today? Which of the ringers, the road warriors, do you think will finish the highest in today's race? Boris, Ron Fellows, Scott Pruitt, Johnny Miller, P.J. Jones. Okay, I got my pick. Cast your vote. Yeah, I would probably think of the same guy. Results up coming shortly. Robbie Gordon, that's, that's smoke. smoke. Robbie Gordon running seventh. I wonder what that was. But I figure as we speak, Dave Burns is hustling to the 31 pit to ask that very question for us. The answer momentarily. Greg Biffle is out in front here at Watkins Glen. Things have settled in after that wild first lap that saw Jeff Gordon go from first to 42nd. Today it's Watkins Glen. Next week, the race for the championship moves on to Michigan as we check our Wendy's race menu. 1.30 Eastern next Sunday on TNT. Then the night race at Bristol, followed by the Southern 500 and Richmond. Some great action coming up for you as we follow the race for the championship on NBC and TNT. Greg Biffle leads here at Watkins Glen. He has led since he made contact with Jeff Gordon's back bumper at turn one, lap one, and Gordon spun out of the way. Biffle up by about uh, two car lengths on Dale Jr. Bill, Greg uh, Biffle, just the third rookie ever to lead a road course race. Ryan Newman and Ted Musgrave, the other two. And he's had a lot of success here, as you know, Al. In his first truck race here, he finished 27th, then a fourth, then he got a win in the truck series, moved up to Bush, got a second place finish here, was 37th at Sonoma. But again, he came here and tested. They had an outstanding test. He likes road course racing. All they're doing, tell them, be smooth. You're doing great. He says the car's a little bit free. Hey, what he's doing a real good job. The car's a little bit loose. I'm just surprised how much these guys are abusing these curbs right now. That's not something that I think you want to do the whole race because that's when you get into breaking shock mounts and things like that. Farther back, Mark Martin, Kurt Busch, Rusty Wallace. Here comes Casey Mears in sixth, and then Robbie Gordon in seventh. A couple laps ago, we talked about some smoke from that car in that corner. Dave, what are they telling us? From I, did check the road? With, I checked with Kevin Hamlin, his crew chief, Allen, and he watched the same broadcast we are showing to keep up with his driver around the track. He said he didn't see anything unusual. Could have been a momentary lock of the tires as he now tries to pass Casey Mears. Been working on him for a few laps, and he's going to get him in turn one. No problems reported on the 31. All right, so Robbie Gordon up to sixth, and Casey Mears back to seventh. Talk with Casey in the garage area this morning. Rookie driver in his first ever Watkins Glen race. Came up here and tested a couple of weeks ago. Felt like he had a pretty decent piece. If he could keep it on the track all day, like you were talking about, BP. That's the whole deal is keep it on the racetrack. Once they start making those pit stops, and we see Robbie Gordon going in the inner loop. Third gear, second gear. Up over the curb. Up over the curb. Grab third right here. He's going to hold second all the way through. That's that different gear change I guess Marty was talking about. Probably shift to fourth. No, that's third gear. Third gear, yep. And then he'll probably maybe hold third or get into fourth just for a second. Nope, he's going to wind it out. It's probably about 9,500 RPMs. And, and third gear is what normally would be the fourth gear position. It is one to one. These cars are using fourth as an overdrive. Wow, he's holding third in the uh, yeah. turn one as well. So yeah, he's getting a lot of RPMs out of that engine. Let's see if he goes to first. Just second gear off turn one. Dave? Well, BP, you know the report Marty gave at the beginning of the race about that gear they're using to restart the race and, and how they changed it after last year. I did talk with Kevin Hamlin about that this weekend. He says they really did feel like that was an important part of their changes to the car this year. Robbie does take second gear through turn number one, but on the restarts, that first gear, he needs a little extra pop, and he's got it this year. Yeah, it used to be you could run through turn one if you had a tall enough first gear, but you couldn't restart very well because it was too tall, and you couldn't get out of the pit because it was too tall, so they have to make a compromise here. Robbie won the year's first race on a road course out at Sonoma, California in late June. Considered one of the better road racers, but I'll tell you, their oval track program for Robbie this season has really come around. The uh, 31 car has three 
top 10 finishes in the last four races. He's 11th in the championship standings. Without question, Robbie Gordon has become a Winston Cup race driver to contend with. Yeah, he's, he's, he definitely has the talent. I mean, I've raced with Robbie a lot. We had some great races together. One thing about on these road courses, he understands you have to run the car really free. The car has to be loose at the start because once you burn that fuel off, these cars get tight. You can't turn them. So he understands you really need to set the car up loose on the beginning. Rusty Wallace, two-time Watkins Glen winner, 87 and 89. He is running in fifth position now. I walked by the car this morning to talk to Jeff Bowles on the car, and there was some concern about the brakes on Rusty's car. Yesterday, he started to lose some pedal, but they worked on this morning, and he's able to run very competitive speed, so it looks to me like they have cured that brake problem. That's a long way to run third. It sure is. He'll grab uh, He oh, wanted to grab oh. fourth, but he's had not to. Man, that's a lot of RPMs. These guys are turning. Woo. A little, little loose there. Under a bridge. Yeah. Which breaks the signal up for a minute. So Rusty Wallace running in fifth position now, just ahead of Robbie Gordon. Gap ahead to Kurt Busch there for Rusty to pick up another spot. 83 races since victory for Rusty Wallace. He says this is the craziest season he's ever seen in Winston Cup racing. Now, what about Jeff Gordon and Tony Stewart? Saw them pit on the early caution. Went to the back of the pack. Where are they now? Here comes Jeff Gordon. Right behind Michael Walter with 25th. Bill? And basically, uh, Alan, it's almost been a car a lot for Jeff Gordon as he's moving up through the field. Very happy with the way, the way the car is running. Says he's loose when he's by himself, but the car plays well with others, meaning when he's in traffic, it handles very well. What's going to be interesting to see is how many spots this pit crew can get Gordon back. They helped him get on the pole. Now they want to see if they can move him forward in the field. Tony Stewart also marching forward, has stopped, did get gas. So having a good run for him as well after having to start at the rear of the field because of the motor change as the 24 busts the move on the inside of Michael Waltrip coming forward. You know, one thing, what, what Jeff's going through, what Tony Stewart's going through, instead of being out front, they're running their cars very hard right now. They're probably using their brakes. They're abusing their brakes a whole lot more. And not only that, but they're trapping, so the air is not cooling those brakes off. So that's going to affect them later a little bit. Should begin to see some pit stops happening shortly. We'll take a break and come back to Watkins Glen. NASCAR Winston Cup Racing from Watkins Glen, presented by Subway, is brought to you by Aflac. Ask about it at work. By Walmart, always low prices, always. By 1010-987, no commitment. It's three cents a minute and 39 cents to connect. 1010-987. And by Stacker 2, the world's strongest fat burner. Pit stops underway, Ron Bellows a Canadian in, a four tire change, the car which is way too tight. They made a track run. Kevin Harvick needs forward bite. They change four tires, reducing the air pressure. Fire in the back of the 29. He leaves the pits and gets out of here. Now that's a burnout. Fuel can. But the fuel can, the, the guy threw the can down and it's on fire. See the safety workers there attempting to extinguish the blaze. Now pit road has to be closed right now. We're still under green, Benny. Now the caution comes out so they can close pit road. Is out. The leader's already gone by the start finish line. Man, look at that thing. There's the catch can laying on the pit road. Boy. You got the headers coming out, or the, the pipes coming out the side where they put the gas. Yeah, he must have spilled some gas when, Honestly, they, yeah. when the can disconnected from the car. Right. And my guess is, my guess is that the guy changing, putting on the lug nuts on the right rear, he, there was a spark. 
when the impact, when the socket touched the nut, there was a spark that set that fire off, I would guess. That's just a guess. But those guys that have stopped, a huge break for them because if these guys are on that state on the racetrack, it's gonna they help come them right in. Here. Dave? Hey guys, the team has confirmed with me that it was a brake fire in the back of the 29 car that ignited the spilled fuel. Brian Engelhart, the fueler, is okay. He just spoke to me, and everyone else in the, in the crew is fine as well. So right, the rear rotor was so hot that when they spilled some gasoline, it caught on fire. Kevin Harvick is back on track. Dave, you got more? Yeah, I just want to clarify, BP, the brakes were actually on fire, so they have a situation with the brakes. It wasn't just heat. Oh, the brakes were on fire. Ooh. All right, it's going to be a minute before the pace car gathers up the field and we see some more caution flag pit stops. So let's take a break here at Watkins Glen. Subway presents NASCAR Winston Cup racing from Watkins Glen, and we're under caution for the second time in the race after a fire in the Kevin Harvick pit. Here is the communication between crew chief Todd Barrier and Kevin Harvick in the car a minute ago, and Kevin asked, what happened? I was saying we had a um, you had some rubber on fire when we stopped and Brian spilled gas and when you took off the gas can the gas blazed up and dog dropped the catch can and it blazed up but uh there's no fire on the car it's all in here BP if that right rear tire got all five lugs on there he should get an award he, he does get an award because he was doing it while flames around him marty bp dale jr started six made his way up to second he is very good they're going to make no chassis changes on the car the water temp is just a little bit hot they do pull a piece of tape off the car that will make the car tighter just a little bit free for dale Earnhardt jr especially in the carousel bill Teammates Greg Biffle and Mark Martin pit nose to tail. Both cars are running while well. the 16 of Biffle wants a little more forward bite. They're going to make an air pressure adjustment on the rear tires. Around to the right side on both cars. They'll have to be careful getting out. They also have to make sure they keep their foot on the brake because they're actually downhill. Biffle is away. Jeff Gordon still sits on pit road, was deeper in the field. They're going to go down on the rear and take some tape off the grill. He's on his way in traffic. Tony Stewart also exiting pit road there. Boris said, remember those are the guys that had to um, come from the back after engine changes and also uh, pit stops on the first caution. So everybody's been on to pit road here. We'll sort it out for you when we come back to Watkins Glen on NBC. Scott Pruitt did not pit under his caution flag. Green flag, green flag. Yet in this race. Second is P.J. Jones. Third is Kevin Harvick. Fourth is John Andretti. Fifth is Ron Fellows. Then Warren and Jeff Burton. Sixth and seventh and Michael Waltrip. Eighth. Oh, man. Oh, they get all, all jammed up behind them. Yeah, P.J. Jones was down there on the inside. Harvick's got problems. Pruitt, that's Harvick off the gas. Top of the screen. It's like the engine blew up and the transmission broke or something on the 29 car. All right, let me try and make sense of this all for you. The cars that did not pit under the caution flag were Scott Pruitt and P.J. Jones. They've not yet stopped in the race. The next four or five cars all had pitted under the green just before the caution came out. Didn't stop under the yellow. Gained all the track position. Worked out perfectly for them. Worked out absolutely perfectly for them. We saw John Andrade in the zero car. Very slow through the interlude. Uh, Dale Earnhardt Jr. was first off the pit road. He restarted in eighth position, uh, excuse me, in ninth position. Is that the left front fender rubbing the tire on the four car? Or was that just brake? I tires? think that's the left front tire, BP, because he had contact with Scott Pruitt in turn one. That's what got Pruitt out of shape. Jeff Burton bidding on him for second. Down into turn one. Man, look at him drag that left front tire. It's, it's rubbing the fender where he made contact with Scott Pruitt. All right, let's go back and show you what happened to Kevin Harvick in turn one a lap ago as they got all bottled up there, piling off into that corner for the restart. Okay, Kevin, right side. 
when he hit me, my hand hit the kill switch. Ah, there oh, goes. I see. When the zero made contact, made contact with the 29, his hand hit the kill switch on the steering wheel and cut the engine off. The switch on the steering wheel, a safety device NASCAR mandated a couple of years ago after drivers are having problems with stuck throttles. It's a device they're supposed to be able to hit with their thumb if the throttle sticks going into a corner to quickly shut the engine off without having to reach up to the uh, dashboard where the ignition switches are normally located. Junior took the spot off of uh, Ward Burton. Looks like Michael Waltrip's going to do the same. And Greg Bevel's going to do the same thing. And Bevel's going to try to go by Mikey as well. It's going to be for sixth place. And second place ahead, Jeff Burton still working on P.J. Jones. He's got him. A little damage on Ron Fellows' car, too, there in the right rear. Yeah, the one car. Yeah, he does need that parachute out there catching wind as he go down, goes down this long straightaway. Not slowing him down a whole lot, though. Matt, what is, what's brought in these guys in the lead thinking about by not pitting? Well, Benny, I spoke to his crew chief, Matt Chambers. He told me they're looking at the 30-30 or a variation of the 30-30 plan. They're hoping to pit somewhere between lap 30 and 32, Marty. And Matty, kind of the same thing for P.J. Jones back there now in third place. You see behind Jeff Burton, they do have a big rub. That's when he did make contact with Scott Pruitt. P.J. has said nothing about it, so they're going to leave him out there. They want to pit around lap 30 as well, so he's going to stay out there for a few more laps at least and live with that big rub on the uh, right front there. Hey, Junior, looks like he's got his braking figured out. He's been picking these guys off on her braking right now. He's doing a good job. He's fast, isn't he? When he goes by Ron Fellows, that tells me that this eight car, this bud car, is very, very good. So Junior's moved up to fourth position, and he's trying to get third away from P.J. Jones. Now, on the pit stops a minute ago, where uh, the field all came in under the caution flag, Todd Bodine had a situation that dropped him to the tail end of the field for the restart. He took something with him when he left. The gas can. You see, it looks like an elephant's trunk. He's trying to shake that thing loose. It finally does come loose, but it lays down on the middle of pit road. But he left his pit box with equipment, which means he had to come back in. So Todd Bodine running back in 40th position now, though he is on the lead lap. Junior for second spot. Uh, check out third spot. Ooh, that's a tough place to pass right there. P.J. Oh. not giving it up. No. Junior gets him. All right, so Junior up to third. Here comes Fellows taking a look. The one car. Remember that P.J. Jones and Larry McClure's number four there has not yet made a pit stop in the race. Everybody that's around him has. Hey, what, that left front tire is not smoking any less. Every time he gets on the brakes, that fender is cutting into that left front tire. And that tire is, isn't that thick to begin with. Right. Be lucky if it does not go flat. Kurt Busch right behind Greg Biffle. All in pursuit of Dale Jr. Now, if these guys do pit, or when they pit, they're going to lose a ton of track position. Yeah. Your votes in our singular race talk poll question. You think Boris said has the best chance among the ringers to finish highest in today's race, though you also give Ron Fellows a lot of credit. Well, I would disagree with the 50% and go with the 39%. I'd have to go with you there, BP. Ron Fellows is in a very good race car today. And especially since he's running fifth. Yep. <laughs> Boris is back in 19th right now. Though Scott Pruitt is first, in the target car coming at you. He's got to stop twice. And some of these guys, I'm not too sure that some of these guys, I'm pretty sure that some of them are going to make it on one more stop. Like, Scott Pruitt has to stop twice. Like the eight? Yeah, like the eight. Fifteen, we're right along with the Napa Chevrolet. There we go. Biffle goes by, fellows. position. Where is Jeff Gordon these days? There he is. How about 18th? That's quite an improvement from 42nd where he 
after he spun where he restarted. Tony Stewart right there behind him. Well, check that. I'm on 19. Boris said went by Jeff last lap. Bill? Making the progress he was making earlier in the race. They did take tape off the nose of that car, Alan, because they were concerned about some temperature information Jeff had been giving them. The temperatures were high, so they took no tape off the nose, which will help that, but could affect the handling of the car as well. So not making the progress up through the field he was hoping for. And Bimble goes by P.J. Jones in the four car. Takes over the fourth spot. Ron Fellows next to try, although he's been trying P.J. for a few laps and hasn't gotten by yet. Well, I'm sure the guys can tell him on the radio, too, that P.J.'s got to be coming in here in the next lap or two. Don't use up your stuff. He's going to be coming to pit lane. By the way, after his problem earlier, Kevin Harvick, when he figured out that he'd hit the kill switch and hit it again to re-engage the uh, ignition, he's back up to speed, though he's in 24th place. And Kyle Petty is back on the track. After the lap one accident he was involved in, he's 16 laps down in 42nd position. Gordon and Tony Stewart come through. There's Kevin. How about Ricky Craven? We had to look a pretty good ways back to find Ricky in this one. 36th place. Matty? 32 pit during those round of pit stops very close now the 32 car of Craven came in he came in at a different angle because Jimmy McMurray was already in catch cam and Steve Williams making a wedge and track bar adjustment now McMurray service already completed as he leaves he pinches Steve Williams between the bumpers of the 32 and McMurray's Dodge he was okay though and his wife Melissa he is okay he told me to tell you Marty well, Matty, the four finally does stop. Started 33rd today, had made their way up to fifth by staying out. They did pull the fender away from the left front. I said right front earlier. I meant left front. Car just a little bit loose. They made an air pressure adjustment in the right front and the right rear, telling PJ he's doing a very good job. Take care of the car. That pit stop didn't help any. I'll tell you one thing. It's lucky that you're not going to get lapped here when you make a pit stop because if he had made a pit stop on the caution flag, he'd have lost about 15, 20 spots. Championship leader Matt Kenseth in the 17 cars running in 16th place. Make it now 17th as Boris said has gone by him. And here come Jeff Gordon and Tony Stewart. I spoke with Robbie Reiser, his crew chief this morning, Matt Kenseth's crew chief, and he said, goal for today, make no mistakes. Driver on the track, team in the pits, no strategy mistakes, no driving mistakes, no any mistakes, and they'll have a decent day. And he also told me that he thinks Matt's a better road course driver than he gets credit for being. Well, he, he told me earlier in the week that Matt is a very good road course driver. They, the, as a team, they just haven't figured out what to give him to be able to get up front. Stacker 2 track back, 7 of 20. Winston Cup winners at Watkins Glen have started on the pole. That's pretty good. 33%. Jeff Gordon started on pole today, though he only led the field for the first yeah. straightaway. Man. And he got booted out of the way. How cruel is that? Yeah. Yeah, he's coming back. You know, uh, our, our statistician, Bill Sloboda, pointed out to me a race that I had forgotten about. Remember at Sears Point a few years back when Ernie Irvin, driving that four car that P.J. Jones is in today, was on the pole, jumped the start, got black flagged, went all the way to the back of the field, like three laps into the race with the penalty, and came back and won. I remember that. You receive the 39 car making a pit stop, so the 99 of Jeff Burton takes the lead. So Scott Pruitt on pit road here and uh, puts uh, Burton into the lead, as Benny said. Earnhardt Jr. to second, Greg Biffle to third. And 35 miles an hour, the pit road speed here today. It's awfully slow feeling when you've been on the track of speed, Matt. Alex and Sterling Marlin's done for the day. His pit crew will service Scott Pruitt. His car just like it was in the final practice session. Matt Chambers is going to try to fix it with air pressures. Mikey Adwell, there's a little bit of trouble on the front. There's a crash. Off the final corner, it's Christian Fittipaldi. And the caution flag is out. You know, we don't have a warning track before you get to the wall here at Watkins Glen in most of these corners.
Paint job for Petty Enterprises here, commemorative of the 100th anniversary of New York Yankees baseball, but the pinstripes did not fare well in their home state today. No. He was trying to catch a long fly. He was trying to catch a long fly ball and right in the wall. That was a good break for the four car of P.J. Jones and Scott Pruitt. Look at the mess. So Jeff Burton, now the leader, brings the field back to the caution flag, and yellow number three is out at Watkins Glen. What happened to Christian? I want to say he got a little help. Steve Park trying to get under Christian in the 30 car, and yep, a little bit of a bump. You are right. And Steve Park spun out. And those big styrofoam blocks, the initial safer barrier put up here at Watkins Glen several years ago to really cushion a blow that a driver might take. That's a heavy impact. Did this job well. So under caution, for the third time in Sirius Satellite Radio at the Glen, you're watching NASCAR on NBC. at Watkins Glen under caution at uh, lap where we had 35 of 90 none of the lead cars came down pit road 24th place on back were the only guys that came in to make pit stops here so the strategy remains stay on track as long as you can except these guys in the lead are going to make one more pit stop and whenever they can get to a position they can make it the rest of the way that's when they'll make that pit stop hopefully it's on the green and the caution flag comes out the next lap would be their Green. What'd you do? Hope. Swallow a frog? Yes, I did. <laughs> Sorry, uh, folks. Finest allergies uh, money can buy, right? Yes, I have them. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Appreciate you hanging in there. He talks through jets. He talks through allergies. Yeah. <laughs> he just talks. Just talks. <laughs> hey, congratulations. I hear you signed a, a four or five race deal to run some more NASCAR Bush Series races. Yep. I'm excited about it. Going to drive for uh, John Reiser at uh, Kansas, Atlanta, Homestead, and Phoenix, and then Daytona next year. Great. Go so I'm looking forward to it, yeah. Sponsor in place and all that? Sponsors in place. Can't say who it is, but uh, you can. can. I have seen, I've seen a rendering of the car, and it's a very clean-looking paint job. It's pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> that, that, looks like, that looks like Mr. Clean, doesn't it? That's him. Wow. How about that? Is that a clue? We're glad to see him at the racetrack. That's yeah. a clue. That's a clue. Oh, that's good. <laughs> you said we'll be seeing him more at the racetrack? Yes. Oh, very I'm nice. sending him to the booth when you guys don't behave. <laughs> well, we're happy for you. We look forward to seeing you out on the racetrack. Uh, Jeff Burton out on the racetrack did not pit under this caution flag, and so he retains the lead. And this is one of those races. We talked about the strategy earlier, but it's just different than you normally think. We're not going to see Burton on the pit road again. He'll probably lap 55, nor most of the other front runners. Right? As soon as they get to the point they feel like they can make it the rest of the way without stopping, that's when they'll stop. And like we talked about earlier, hopefully they'll catch it right, where they'll come in, they'll leave the pits, and the yellow will come out, and they can make up all that track position. Just like it did to get Jeff Burton up front right. last time. NBCSports.com, if you will log on there, you can check out previews of uh, each Winston Cup race. BP does some writing there, as well as yours truly. Talk about uh, who's streaking and struggling and different topics of interest in the sport. NBCSports.com. Well, we'll see the lights are out about on top the pace truck, which means when the cars get back to the start-finish line, we'll see the green flag. Next weekend, the race for the championship moves on to the Michigan International Speedway, and it also moves on to TNT. Next Sunday, live coverage, high bank, high speed, two-mile track, 1.30 Eastern, beginning of our broadcast next weekend with Discover Card Countdown to Green. You know, this is a stretch that I really like about the championship because it shows the versatility it takes among driver and team to win the title. You got Indianapolis last week, big, flat, fast two and a half miles, Watkins Glen Road Course, two-mile high bank track next week, the Bristol Short Track, Darlington, and you got to be good at all of them. And then you go to Richmond, so yeah. the next five or six weeks are going to be very, and it continues on until the end of the season. All hey, right, here we go. Hey, trucks off. Four wide. there that time on the uh, restart. Yeah. Ron Fellows peaking. Greg Biffle to block. And Kurt Busch trying to go by.
by on the outside of Fellows. Not where you want to no, be. No, just work just do. right. Excuse me, that's my racetrack you're trying to take. Yep. Really need to be on the inside when you get to turn two. Do not want to be on the outside. Three different drivers have led today. Jeff Gordon led the field to the green flag, but got bumped off track in turn one, lap one. Greg Biffle, starting second, took over and led the first 23 laps. And Scott Pruitt went by when the other front runners pitted. And now Jeff Burton out in front once Scott Pruitt went to pit road. Burton's hold on the lead, a little bit tenuous right now. Dale Jr. with a lot of pressure. Bobby Gordon back in traffic. Here's Junior going for the lead. Turn 10, trying to look on the inside. Can't quite make it. Now, if he can just stay close enough to him right here, he'll make his move down into turn one. But you've got to be right on his bumper right here. Sharply downhill into turn one. Not quite close enough to be able to, because you really need to go in one car length deeper in order to get beside him for turn one to be your corner. He just wasn't close enough that time. Talk about wheel hop, Wally, and that is that corner, one of the best places that you can fall victim to wheel hop. After it's happened to Junior a couple of times in the past here, including earlier this weekend, how nervous is he about making that stab on Jeff Burton? Now, he's thinking about it because it just when you think you have it figured out, it happens and the only time the only way you can really get out of a wheel hop is once that rear is hopping off the race track and it's bouncing you've got to get back in the gas to free those tires up and that's a difficult thing to do when you're screaming down into the corner trying to slow the car down when you're already one car length too deep in the corner it's hard to get back on the throttle hey jeff burton's no slouch here at watkins glenn his last three finishes here third in 2000 second in 2001 seventh in 2002. Matt, Jeff Burton getting it done today as well. He sure is battling a tight race car earlier back on lap 19. They made an air pressure adjustment. That helped the car on the get-go, but it is slowly starting to go back to the tight side, Marty. And for Dale Earnhardt Jr., Matt, he's having a pretty good run. He also talked about the last adjustment they made. He came on the radio and said, I'm not sure if that helped us out or if it hurt us. I'm not quite sure how that affected our race car. But we only have one more stop, guys. We've got to get it right on that last stop because right now, I'm not sure we're good enough to win. Bill? Greg Biffle wanted a little more forward fight. His crew chief, Randy Goss, said they gave it to him. The car is a little bit better. So they're hoping that his march to the front of the field continues. Right now, Biffle in the 16 car losing a little space to the 8 car of Dale Earnhardt Jr. And he is abusing those curves. Greg Biffle talked to them earlier in the weekend about rumors of changes within his team. Been a lot of rumors going around about some crew members maybe swapping around back and forth within Roush Racing. He told us what was going on there. Well, you know, it just we haven't been running as good as we want to. And, um, you know, we're talking about, you know, bringing uh, more strength to the team or, or, you know, changing some guys around that go on the road that don't go on the road or something. We're just trying to get the right combination. You know, it's team effort. And we're trying to get the team to gel together properly uh, and bring the most strength we have to the track. And, uh, you know, we're doing whatever we can do to make our, our team run in the top ten every week. Well... That's what you got to do these days. I mean, because everybody wants answers now. You, 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 everybody's looking for results right away. So if things aren't happening for you, you need to make changes. See Michael Waltrip and Rusty Wallace there racing for a spot. That'll be sixth and seventh places. And Mark Martin coming up behind them in eighth. Michael started back in 34th. You know, Michael's in the same boat that Jeff Burton was. The pit stop slash caution flag sequence worked out perfectly for them. Michael stopped under the green along with Jeff Burton at lap 19. Then the caution came out at lap 22 before all the other guys had stopped. So they inherited the lead. They came in and pitted, then came out behind Michael and Jeff Burton on the racetrack, and that's what got him his track position from way back where he started in 34th. As for Rusty, he started fifth. He's running seventh. Hanging in. Hanging in. He's one of the guys that stopped on the caution flag. Dale Earnhardt Jr., Biffle, Rusty, Mark Martin. Watch Rusty as he goes down the corner, tries to close in on Michael Waltrip. 
and here's another area of BP where you really want your car good because if you can get up through the S's and you can run through there almost flat and you can get on the back bumper, you can gain just a little bit, but you really need to close yeah, up on the car you're gonna get him. in front of you and then you can set him up to make the out braking pass here in the next corner, which is the end of the loop. Position. The fellow is still dragging around that uh, piece of fender from the right rear of his car when he got some damage earlier. Going to take a break here. As always, if anything happens during the commercial, we'll break out, come back, and show it to you live. Plus, through the field, when we come back to Watkins Glen. 20th NASCAR Winston Cup race here at Watkins Glen. And up in the front, a new leader. The 8 and the 99 battling, and now trouble elsewhere on the track. Allen. As Junior comes back, Tony Raines has trouble. Junior takes the full course caution at the start-finish line, the fourth one of the race. Well, the 74 of Tony Raines is going to limp back around and head to the garage. He was running 35th at the time. And Tony's going back to the garage area with a very, uh, I think he's hot. I would say he's hot. Yes, he's hot because... Something caused this, and he probably had some help in making contact with the retaining wall. All right, here he is the uh, pass for the lead with Junior squeezing by Jeff Burton. Just seconds before we came back. Comes off the carousel, gets him a good run to turn 10, gets on the inside and just simply outbreaks him and does the wheel up, just does it perfectly. Goes on in the front. And the crash, Tony Raines. 74 car. Ooh, he and Terry the body hooked. Look at that. Ouch. Another shot. Ever see Tony? Not often you see him crash on the straightaway. Yeah, I was just going to say that. What we have here is a miscommunication. He was one was going right, the other was going left, and you know we in the got, same spot. We got us a little pattern going here. Every time we start to go through the field, somebody crashes. It's not a good pattern. No. What's up with that? <laughs> I know what about that, Bill. I mean, if you don't want us on the air, just don't open the mics, but come on. Hey, you may get a chance to be on the air with some pit stops here in just a second. How's I'll that? be surprised. Yeah. I don't think so. Maybe a handful of them. Uh, Bill, you know, we might be in a point right now that you can make a pit stop and make it the rest of the way. Hey, hey, if that happens, I want to be in inspection. Yeah, to see how big the fuel tank is? Uh, just to see how they did it, you might say. Well, you know, it depends how many caution flag laps we get. It kind of brings up a good point. At the end of last year's race, 10 of the final 25 laps were run under caution. And if you have a situation like that, who is it? Uh, Jeff Green last year yeah. ran final 40 some laps. laps. If you're running in the 20s and you and you have a 20th place car, I'd be hitting pit lane to do that. Big exactly. Pit. I mean, why not? And you and you feel like you might be able to make it within a lap or two of four or five laps of the end. I'd be stopping. Gamble. I don't think anybody's within four or five laps. Okay. Yeah. And they were down at this end. They were all talking. The earliest was lap 54, and that was a push. So a lot of it was 56. Okay. Okay. Well, we'll watch when they come back around to the opening of pit road and see what happens. Meantime, how about the leader, Marty? He's going to stay out, but uh, keep an eye on his teammate, Michael Waltrip, the 15 car. They're talking about coming down. They were going to come down at lap 50 no matter what. And, uh, you know, Slugger Labby may just roll the dice here and try it. That uh, I agree with Bill. I'd like to be an inspection after the race if he does make it all the way on fuel from here. Well, if he comes in, he'll be coming in. At halfway. Yeah. I'm just thinking, you know, how much the breather is on the back. I don't think he'd come in. He'd wait another lap. I was hoping you were going to do some math there. I'm not going to ever do that. <laughs> but if he was going to come in and fuel, fuel when they take the green. Or, you know, right before they take the green. So, yeah, come in now, top it off, come back again, top right. it off. Yeah. Yeah, we'll see. All right, here they come to the opening of pit road. As advertised, Junior stays out. Let's see if anybody makes the left turn below that yellow line. Michael's thinking. He's, He's thinking back. about it. He's yeah. thinking about it. What are we going to do? Guys, no. come on. Too late. No. Some of these guys back here have got to come in. Wow. The survey says no. Weber, you win. <laughs> Dale Earnhardt Jr. leads at Watkins Glen.
NASCAR Winston Cup Racing from Watkins Glen, presented by Subway, is brought to you by TGI Fridays, introducing three big flavors. Choose from dishes like our new garlic chicken or our sizzling chicken and cheese. By Allstate, you're in good hands with Allstate. By Discover to Go, it pays to discover. And by new Smirnoff Ice Triple Black, triple filtered for a crisp, clean bite. Although rain was in the forecast, turned out to be a pretty beautiful afternoon here at Watkins Glen. And the leader, Dale Earnhardt Jr., playing a little bumper tag with the pace truck. Now, I'm not going to yield the ground completely to Weber here because some guys did pit under this caution flag. Uh, 23rd place on back, Joe Nemechek was the first to stop. How about 25 car, Marty? Well, I just talked to his crew chief, Peter Suspenzo, and he said, you know, we really had nothing to lose. We had about a 23rd place car right now, and we're trying to finish, you know, 12th or so with it. But the theory is, now on the last stop, all they have to do is a gas and go. And you may see that last stop, like around lap 53, because then they can make it all the way from there. Matty? Marty, an update on the championship leader, Matt Kenseth. He's been battling a tight race car all day. They tried to adjust on it, but the car just does not get any better. Coming to the green flag, Dale Earnhardt Jr. Weird, I mean, just don't turn. Like, I'll get to that long corner. It just feels like it's got, you know, 55% nose weight. It just keeps pushing the front tires off. I just can't get it to turn. I just got to wait for the front tires to grip. When they finally do grip, now at the end of the run, I'm spinning the tires up off. But still needs to cut better for the center of all the corners. At 10-4, I'm just worried about the loose off. I mean, we can take and drop that air pressure in the front. Back underway. Thoughts of Matt Kenseth and crew on their situation. Well, Rusty's going to, Rusty should get the spot. And if Mark can stay close enough on Rusty, he'll pass Michael as well in the 15 car. Oh! And Michael, Michael hung, hung in good. there. Yeah. We see Ron Fellows has taken over that third spot from Greg Biffle. Not had a good restart. Made the dive into turn uh -oh, one. Uh oh, Boris said. Trouble on the backstretch of the whole field charging at him. Oh, man. Good job. What a job. Let me slow me at the top of the S. What a job, my boards. The damage there on his left front corner. Like he said, he, he was running 10th at the top. Bring it back, man. Nice and smooth. And we stay under the green flag. that Morris said did there. Amazing. Morris got to get down. There you go. Get on the right side there. Fender two. Left front fender. So Morris coming to pit road and monitoring NASCAR's race control channel. There's some discussion about debris. And a caution flag would be much needed by Boris here to let him catch up to the pack if yeah. it were to come out. But so far, no yellow. 35 mile an hour pit road speed coming to Dave. Seems like you're crawling, Alan. They said two left side tires only. Don't want to take the time to put on four. Try to pull away that damage on the left side if they can. So they'll just do the two tire stop now. Pack the fuel cell full of fuel. This should not be within their window, guys. Yeah, there's a lot of damage there. Boy, it sounds like he's got that tall first gear yeah. in it. Fastest part on the track right here. Yeah, it looks like. But Robbie Gordon. Robbie Gordon is able to run the back of him and see all these cars getting by. Jeff Gordon goes by. Tony Stewart. Matt Kenseth gets by. Championship leader. They see the yellow light flashing there. So we get a little look at it. Yeah, just clipped him. Robbie was probably flat through the S's, and Boris right. had to breathe it a little bit. Yeah. But the yellow light flashing there on a road course. On board with Boris. And there's a little bit of a bump. Wow. Yeah, you're not lifting at that part of the racetrack. So you, you can hear he grabbed fourth gear already. So Boris was already flat in the gas. The local yellow that waved there in that section of the racetrack was not a full course caution. Drivers just warned that there was a situation on the track, and as soon as the car cleared the scene, they pulled that yellow flag in, and we stay on the green. Dale 
Wright Jr. leading his first laps on a road course in his NASCAR Winston Cup career. 39 of the 43 starters on the lead lap, 42 of the 43 starters. Harvick taking a look at Jimmy Johnson. He's got the spot. That's back in the 16th position. Remember Kevin Harvick had the pit fire on his car. On a green flag stop back at lap number 20. Two more laps, buddy. Keep holding on to it. Chad Knauss telling Jimmy Johnson just in a few laps, you're going to come in, we're going to make some adjustments, we're going to put some fuel and tires on this thing, and you're good to go for the rest of the day. 48, one of the drivers who had to drop to the tail end of the field on the pace laps because they changed engines during the race weekend. You saw the progress that he's made up through the pack. Chad Knauss was kind of frustrated. I talked to him a moment ago. I said, you know, when are you going to pit? He said, I don't know. If we keep falling back from the leaders like this, then we're going to have to pit later than we thought we would be able to. But he would like to pit like around lap 52 or 53. You're going to see some of these guys up front pit as early as lap 50 and try to make it the rest of the way on fuel. These Hendrick cars just can't go that far on fuel mileage. They're going to look about that lap 52, 53 for the 48 car, Jimmy Johnson. Casey Mears looking under Tony Stewart. That's to try and get a spot back that Tony just took from him. So Tony up to 13th, Casey back to 14th. Here comes Matt Kenseth, your championship leader. He's trying to get position on Casey. He's there. Oh! Did they make contact? Almost, if not. Kevin Harvick trying to take advantage. And does. Oh, yeah, yeah, and Kenseth has that run damage. Yep. Contact between the 17 and 41. Wow, that's smoking a lot. And he's going to have to come in and get that change. But you know what? I'll tell you what. If he can make that last another lap or so just to get into his fuel window, it might not be a bad deal because then he can go the rest of the way without stopping again. But if it comes apart and tears the left front corner off the car, yeah. then it's not worth a gamble not worth right. taking. You know? Or it blows the front front tire and he hits the wall someplace. Matt, what are they saying? Benny, they're talking about pity. He doesn't think they can make it two or three more laps to their window. Robbie Reiser told him to come to pit road. Yeah, I was going to say, I don't think they can make it either. That tire is running really, really bad on that fender right now. And it's a... And here he comes to pit road. So this is with 40 laps to go in the race. And if they can't make the distance on fuel, that's going to be tough on the 17 car. Also, Casey Mears is in just in front of him. And the championship leader's in, Matt. And Robbie Rogers, boys, going to work. He was tight and loose. They're going to adjust the car with air pressure. As they come around to the left side, you can see one of the crews blowing out, blowing out that brake dust so that the changer can see the lugs a little easier. Stop looking good so far. He's gone. Now, Matt, you know, we talked about backwards pit stops here today, so they were coming around to the right side. But we understand your confusion because everything's the opposite here at the Glen. <laughs> right, Matty? I kind of have your math going on. <laughs> yeah. Well, when you're running down to the pit. Yeah, that's two weeks in a row we caught you running. Proud just, of you. Just working hard, Alan. Dale Jr. Oh, got a car off. Rusty Wallace oh. in the gravel trap. And in the mud. Oh, look at that. Is he stuck? He's going to be stuck. Yeah, he's stuck. He Absolutely. can't get out of there. We're off in champ, Billy, but I don't think he hit him. I'm in the mud. I'm that's at the inner loop. No caution yet. Uh, lost the brakes going in and uh, went to uh, vacuum cleaner. <laughs> vacuum cleaner. And the caution flags out. And again, they look at, can, look at everybody look at coming everybody. onto pit road. They were on pit road before the caution flag, before the caution, pit road was closed. If Big they can break. make it on fuel, what a brilliant move that was on all these crew chiefs' parts. Robbie Gordon's in. Ward Burton, Dale Jarrett. Dave? The 29 car of Kevin Harvick is in. They're going to change four tires on his car. The rears were sliding. Robbie Gordon right behind him, his teammate. They're going to change four as well. Gordon off first. They may have just changed two guys. I couldn't see it. See Jimmy Johnson, Steve Park. You know, a lot of these guys have spotters back there. 
in the inner loop where Rusty went off. And when they saw that, they were calling the coochies going, hey, there's going to be a yellow. And that was, that was an excellent move to call these guys in. NASCAR checking the photo finish camera that they use on the caution flags to make sure that these cars were all past the caution flag on pit road before the yellow came out. And the word that came back is, yes, they were. Those stops are all legal. Beautiful call. Absolutely. Great call. And, and for those spotters back there be, being on their toes on that deal. All right, what happened to Rusty Wallace? Well, I was a little premature in saying they fixed their brake problem. You heard him say he gets down to turn 10 and just doesn't have any brakes. And you see all the mud. We've just had an enormous amount of rain here at Watkins Glen over the weekend. In fact, they had a lot of trouble trying to get some of the fans into the parking lots today. They've had so much water on the property. Go on board with Rusty Wallace and listen as he goes down to turn 10. See what it sounds like when you get in the corner with no brakes. Now he wheel hops. Sounds like he was wheel hopping. Absolutely. He wheel hopped, and that's exactly what we were talking about earlier. One of those corners where you get into the wheel hop. When, that, when you hear all that... We're all fixed here, Billy, but I don't think you hit it. When you hear all that bouncing around... You could hear the rear of the car bounce, and that was the wheel hop. And when the vacuum planner... Man, how frustrating is that? Okay, so waiting for the field to close up behind the pace truck now. And then pit road to be opened. Just before Rusty had his problem and the caution came out, the leader Dale Earnhardt Jr. had a little squirrely moment. Then it turn one. Wow. Almost got off in the grass. Looked fun. <laughs> I think that's what he's trying to do, just bring a little excitement to his life. I, I think he was having fun there. Didn't get a good look at what that was. No. So the field gathering up now behind the pace truck. I, I tell you, the caution could turn out to be a break for Matt Kenseth, too, if they run enough laps under the yellow flag here to get him within his fuel window. Now he's got track position on all those other guys that made the dive to pit road. Right. So that could turn around to be a big plus for the championship leader. Have to see how it all works out. And will these leaders stop under the caution flag? Because they are within their fuel window. I'm sure that most of these cars are within their fuel window. Are they going to stop on the caution? Even, even if you're close, I think you have to. By the way, the follow-up from Pit Road, Robbie Gordon did get four tires on his stop. Oh, that was a great stop. Yep. We'll see where he's running here when this all gathers back up because the field is really jumbled up right now with those guys that made the dive onto pit road just before the caution came out. Brilliant move. Oh, man. Just terrific. You know, Michael Waltrip and, and Ken Schrader and some of the guys like the kid around, the, the way you plan your strategy here is you figure out when the caution's going to come out and you stop just before it. <laughs> you know, and it's, it's funny and it's a joke, but didn't it just work out that way? But you I know, mean, a lot of the teams only have two spotters. They don't have a spotter over in turn 10. Imagine not having one over there and not realizing we're right, that there was going to be a caution flag and those teams that have the third spotter, good move on their part. Hey, Benny. Yeah. Let's see if that one lap that these guys have stayed out that are going to pit now plays into it later, too. Okay. Uh, the extra fuel, you mean? Yeah. Okay, here run. they all come down pit road. Stop's going to come with 37 laps to go. Is that Bobby Labonte hung a right and stayed out? Or left, in this case. There I am getting caught in the backwards thing. Another right. <laughs> you see Biffle, where he's going to come all the way down to the end of pit road. Jeff Burton in the 99 car. Marty? Well, as team said, we have good news and bad news. The good news is we can go all the way on fuel. The bad news is there's six teams that out snookered as four tires, a pound out of both rears for Dale Earnhardt Jr. to need more Ford bite, Matt. And they're already going to work on Jeff Burton's right side. They made an air pressure adjustment in the left front. The car was tight, but it was also low. A little slow on the right rear. Jr.'s going to beat him. The 16 of Biffle is loose, slight air pressure adjustment. He said, oh, no, when he heard how many cars had stopped. A lot of traffic down here. They are iffy at best on fuel. Dave. 97 of Kurt Busch gave up fifth place, came and took on four tires, had to wait just a little bit to pack the fuel cell full of fuel, got off pit road cleanly. Now, the 18 car, Bobby Labonte, you said stayed out. That is correct. They knew they couldn't make it here uh, from here on fuel anyway. Their target lap is about lap 56. They were three short of that. Alan? 
Well, that's going to be very costly for Bobby once he has to come in. How about the race off pit road? And we really had a mix-up as we see the eight car winning their battle off pit road. But then they all have to start stopping because the field hasn't gone by yet. The paddle man down at the end of pit road has a paddle up. And I thought the, all these cars were going to run into each other. So under caution, just past halfway here at Watkins Glen, and a big twist in the picture of this one. Subway presents NASCAR Winston Cup Racing from Watkins Glen, just past the midway point of today's race, and the new leader is Bobby Labonte. want to go back and just show you how things worked out that guys like Robbie Gordon got onto pit road, but Dale Jr. didn't when Rusty Wallace crashed. Because... They're in front of Rusty Wallace. There we see Junior, Jeff Burton, Ron Fellows, Greg Biffle, Kurt Busch. Now they're in the next to last corner of the track. There's Rusty going off behind them. So Junior's almost by the pit entrance already here. And they didn't throw the yellow out for And they didn't throw seconds. the yellow. Right. But all, now all these cars behind, like Robbie Gordon, as we see coming off turn 10 right now. See the wreck happening. They see the wreck, and they right. know there's going to be a caution flag. Exactly. So they're just, that was just... And they have right time. Place and the right time. They, have, they have time to hang the right onto pit road and get there before the caution's out. What's Jeff Gordon when he comes in the pits? He makes a corner. See all that? The black dust is flying. That is brake dust. Brakes at this racetrack are incredible how much you use them. Talking to some of the engineers, 1,200 degrees heat on the front, 1,100 degrees in the back. So let's go inside our Home Depot virtual garage and show you how they keep these brakes cooled off to the point they can continue. All these hoses coming from the front bumper go back to the rotor and caliper and the brake system. And when these drivers apply the brakes, it gets hotter and hotter and hotter. And I'm talking about, as I said a moment ago, 1,200 degrees. When the air comes in through the hoses, cools off the rotors, makes them livable. Yep, livable is the, it doesn't yep. really cool them, it helps. It helps. Actually, these yellows help more than anything. Cool these guys' brakes off. Oh, I see Jeff Gordon right behind Greg Biffle. Yeah, that should be interesting when they yeah. have to turn one on the restart. If I was Greg, when I go down the front straight away, I just move over and say, wave, go ahead. Wave, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Bill? Uh, that'll be very interesting to watch, and you brought up the incident earlier this year, Alan, so we will be keeping an eye on that. But just so you know, Jeff Gordon is probably two green flag laps short of being able to make it on fuel. If you just tuned in, Let's show you what we're talking about. Yeah, and, and you know what? Believe me, Gordon is not happy about this, even though it helped a long time. Go down to turn one. Pimple says he locked the brakes up, and he got back into the back of Jeff Gordon. But when you're in Jeff Gordon's shoes right now, if I was in Jeff Gordon's shoes, I would have my bumper all up underneath the bumper of that 16 car and let him know that I was not happy about that move. If Biffle's smart, he'll give him plenty of room on the restart and let him have a spot as a courtesy of what he did to him earlier. And then go back and try and pass him again. And go back again. and try to pass him clean. clean. If, uh, if you're just joining us, that was turn one, lap one. Jeff Gordon and Greg Bibble shared the front row for the race. <laughs> it didn't work out for Jeff. Now, resetting the strategy for you. Six cars did not pit under this caution. Bobby Labonte, Ricky Rudd, Jamie McMurray, Johnny Miller, Paul Menard, and Jimmy Spencer. They hold the top six spots. You see the orange and black 31 car of Robbie Gordon. We saw him as first off pit road of the guys that, that made the dive in just before the caution came out. He is seventh in line, followed by Kevin Harvick, Casey Mears, and Jimmy Johnson. There were 12 guys in that group that made the dive there. Dale Jr., first off pit road of the guys that stopped under caution. He's in 20th place. And let me tell you something. Robbie is in a very, very good position because he is going to go. And Earnhardt's in a very difficult position because he's got a lot of cars to pass. If this race goes green the whole way, Dale Jr. is not going to catch that 31 car. And by the way, Matt Kenseth, the championship leader, we saw the green flag pit stop for him. He's in 14th right now. So if he's got fuel to make the finish, that's all worked out in his green favor. Flag, green flag. start fanning out three four wide Robbie Gordon dives on the inside of Spencer but is the 04 Miller going to be in his way it's orange and black car is Robbie Gordon Robbie was smart enough to back off and let him go too and for the lead Ricky Rudd diving underneath Bobby Labonte as they go into the S's Labonte shut the door on him I think he slammed the door on him that was not a gentle shut <laughs> lucky he didn't catch his toe in it Looking back for Jeff Gordon and Greg Biffle. 
comes Gordon. Where's Biffle? Biffle's ahead of him. Oh, is it one? Yeah. So you got to catch him before you can dash Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Jeff doesn't look like he got a very good start then if he's that far behind the 16 car. His car does not restart well. It likes to spin the tires, Wally, so the 24 is not good on restarts. Well, that will explain it then. Craven there in the 32 shuffled to the outside. Both Griffle and Gordon go by. Ryan Newman, the 12, goes by. And Michael Walter by him. Jeff Bird still smoking that left front fender on the tire when he hits the brakes going in turn 10. Oh, this is going to be uh -huh. interesting. Oh. oh! Speaking of slamming the door. Yeah. <laughs> Dale Jarrett on Steve Park. Now, remember, Jr. trying to dig his way out of the hole from the timing of where the caution flag fell. Oh, he just burned it. Oh, and see Johnny, Johnny Miller. Miller. And somehow he got through the gravel trap back on the racetrack. And Ryan Newman is on the outside of Jeff Gordon to take the spot away. Passes Gordon. Okay, this is turning into one of those segments of the race where you don't know what to watch because there's a lot of stuff happening all at once. That would be uh, Newman on Jeff Gordon for 23rd place. And as tightly as these guys are bunched going into some of these corners and as hard as they're fighting for spots as we close in on the end of the race, we may see somebody off in the gravel trap here shortly. Yeah. Wouldn't surprise me in the least if it were to happen. Remember last year, 10 of the final 25 laps of the race run behind the pace car. P.J. Jones in the 4, Johnny Miller in the 04, looking back on Newman and Gordon and Michael Waltrip. Gordon better. He, he was trying to make a move on the 12 car. He said they were dicing each other, and then the 15 car almost got up beside Jeff Gordon. So just like, I can't understand why he's fell back, back those couple spots. Unless maybe he checked up because Johnny Miller got off the course over there. Both those cars going by Steve Park in the 30. Now Michael Walter trying to get by Steve. That is for 22nd place. Nothing's changed up front. Bobby Labonte still leading Ricky Rudd while we watch this action back in the pack. Looks like Biffle's been able to get by Ron Fellows. You know, watching Jeff Gordon, who started on pole for this race. Well, Spencer off course. That's why I hesitated trying to figure out who it was. Cue the duck. Half-Life NASCAR Winston Cup trivia quiz. The last time three straight NASCAR Winston Cup races were won from pole. I bring that up because Ryan Newman at Pocono and Kevin Harvick at Indianapolis the last two weeks have won from pole position. Got this one? No. It's a pretty good answer. It's longer ago than I thought. How about 1985? Wow. Bill Elliott won at Michigan, Dale Earnhardt at Bristol, and then Bill Elliott won the Winston Million at Darlington. And all three of those victories from pole position. I think Jimmy's been in the grass more than he's been on the track here this last lap. Dave, got an update for us on the leader, Bobby Labonte. Guys are going to have to pull this thing in next time by. They will. Hit, they just hit their window to the end, a safe window, that is. They told Bobby before this last restart, get all you can get, buddy, because we're going to have to come in. Boy, he's going to come in at the right time. Got trouble. Kenny Wallace spun around, an exit of turn one. So far, just a local yellow. And it's amazing he's able to pull across the racetrack. One more. Inside, clear behind him. We got spun around, guys. Got hit from behind. Spun around. Yeah, well, we, see, okay. we see in the right rear where they made contact with Kenny Wallace. That would have been a great break for All four Bobby if it would have went okay. yellow. Kenny was running 34th. He now will go back to about 38th. Yeah, 38 cars on the lead lap here. Only car out of the race at Watkins Glen, Sterling Marlin went out of the very first lap with an engine failure. Everybody else still on track. Bobby Labonte, the leader, as Dave Burns said, coming to pit road. Ricky Rudd takes over the top spot. Dave? And the last report from Bobby was that they were uh, needing a little more grip, but they adjusted on that, and now he was sliding the nose a little bit. So they're going to see if they can correct that with the air pressure, but not much. Bobby really likes the car, and as you saw, he was pulled away from the butter front of the field. Left side tires on now for Bobby. They'll go around the passenger side, the right side, a little bit different this day. As they pit in the opposite direction, the crew will send him back out. His teammate Tony Stewart and Dave Blaney are also on pit road. Bill? 
Tony Stewart for fuel only. Fuel only. He's, He's over the, the line. line. He's over the line. So they'll have to push him back. Now they can service it. Now they can put the fuel in. He's on his way. Oh, that cost him. That cost him. Oh, my goodness. He had great strategy. No tires. Only going to take four or five seconds for fuel. And it cost him a couple of seconds to have to push the car back. They need a caution Boy, to catch back up to the pack and be able to try and pass some cars. Ricky Rudd is out in front at Watkins Glen. First lap he's led all season long since Las Vegas back in March. And now he comes to pit road in the Air Force car. 30 laps to go, so Rudd safely within his window, making it the rest of the way on fuel. What will the strategy be? Fuel, tires, Matt? Well, Ricky Rudd's going to go for tires at this juncture, four tires. They told him he was three laps shy, eight caution laps shy of making it. Rudd trying for his third win here at the Glen. He's going to go to work on the right side of the car. The 42 of McMurray team, they're waiting for him as well. He couldn't make it. And Matt, just, just to clear up, three laps shy was from that last caution, which is why they didn't stop then, right? You're exactly right, A.B. Yep. Your math, I hate to say it, <laughs> is correct. So Rudd heads back out on track. Jamie McMurray is now the leader. Let's go back and show you what happened to Kenny Wallace a minute ago. Downhill to turn one. Oh, the seven car, I'm sorry. Okay, Jimmy Spencer, down in turn one, going in on the outside, some contact with Boris Sid, and around goes Jimmy. And oh, okay. Around goes Kenny. So it was the 7 and the 23. Yeah. Yes. Big go high. Come on. Come on. All right, Matt. Jamie McMurray already in. They're going to work on the right side of the race car. Donnie Wingo and Jesse McMurray's tight race car with some air pressure adjustments in both rear tires. Okay, so that's the last of the cars that did not stop under the last caution to come in and make a pit stop as far as the front runners are concerned. Robbie Gordon is now the leader. And the cars up front, for the most part, as we ride with Robbie, are the guys who dove onto pit road just as Rusty Wallace spun over into the gravel trap at lap 51, got their stop, and got back out onto the track. It's Robbie Gordon leading. Kevin Harvick is second. Gee, I seem to remember last time these two were running up front together in a road course race. Now that and Finian and, and Paul Menard is in third spot in the 33 car, Andy Petrie's car. He hasn't hit it yet. He Look should be coming in shortly. Look here on the 29. See that? Menard comes to pit road. Just what we were talking about uh, at Sears Point a little bit earlier, back at the end of June, the road course race, Robbie Gordon and Kevin Harvick, two of the strongest cars contending for the win, coming back to a caution flag. Robbie slipped underneath his teammate and beat him for that spot back to the yellow. That's what put the whole gentleman's agreement thing into play that's been talked about so much over the summer. Robbie Gordon went on to win the race. Jeff Gordon chased him to the checkers, and Jeff Gordon said afterwards that Robbie had trouble running faster under the caution than he did under the green, and a whole war of words broke out that ended with Robbie saying, hey, trophy's still sitting on my shelf. I don't think not very apologetic. But I think that's all forgotten about right now. Oh, yeah. Because I think Robbie... Maybe not purposely, but did help Harvick at, at the Brickyard last weekend because Robbie was racing those guys really hard while Harvick was driving off into the distance. And then Robbie Gordon was not trying to hold up the field. He was trying to run second. And I don't blame him for trying to keep those guys behind him. He obviously lost three or four spots, but he was trying to run second spot. Pay and points. There's a difference between second and fifth. Big tire. So 27 laps to go here at Watkins Glen in the Sirius Satellite Radio at the Glen. Robbie Gordon leads.
This 220.5 mile race on what has turned out to be a beautiful day, even though there was bad weather in the forecast. Some smooth runs on the track. Some guys having a tough time. Let's take you through the field and show you who's running up front and tell you why. Starting with the 31 of Robbie Gordon, that means Dave Burns talks first. And Bill, you talk about smooth runs, that's exactly what Robbie is doing right now. He's not happy with the way the car handles through turn one in second gear, but he's happy with the fuel mileage because he's out front. Right behind him, his teammate, Kevin Harvick, he's not pushing him right now because he too needs to save fuel. If they both work together, I check with their pits, they should be good to the end on fuel. Matt? The Ganassi cars are running third and fourth. Casey Mears, two laps shy at this juncture of making it on fuel. But crew chief Jimmy Yelich thinks that they can make that up by just conserving. That's what he's trying to do. Meanwhile, Scott Pruitt, I talked to his crew chief, Matt Chambers. The air pressure adjustment has helped on the last stop. He hasn't said anything else, Marty. Dale Earnhardt Jr. doing all he can inside that little red race car to pedal towards the front, currently running fifth. A minute ago, he told everybody on the radio, shut up. Let me concentrate on trying to track these guys down. Jimmy Johnson behind him. Car's pretty good for Jimmy. I asked Chad Knauss, do you can you make it all the way? Do you have to stop? He said, I should stop again, but I'm not going to, Matt. Jeff Burton trying to improve on that second place finish. He says the car has gotten a little bit better. They are looking at the fuel mileage, though, Dave. Burton. Ward Burton trying to better his best of 19th here at Watkins Glen. How do you do it? Stay on the track and catch a lucky break. He pitted with those guys that came in and ducked in like the 29 car. He's on the same strategy. Matt? When Matt Kansas looked at this season, it felt like the road courses were their biggest hindrance standing between them and a championship. They tested it both. They feel like it has helped Bill. Right now, he's running in the top 10. They are close, close, close on fuel. In fact, Robbie Reiser said, Matt, concerned it's vital. Greg Biffle was heartbroken when he found out other guys got on pit road when the last caution came out. He was just crushed. They came on the pit road to try and fix the car because it's a little loose on both the left and right-hand turns. They're still iffy at best on fuel. Alan? Here's your top 10. 23 laps to go here at Watkins Glen. Robbie Gordon is the leader, got the lead. When he ducked onto pit road, just as Rusty Wallace crashed in front of him at lap number 51, then the caution came out, everybody else came in behind him, and that gave Robbie eventually the track position he needed to have the lead. Let's continue going through the field, Bill. Well, Jeff Gordon started on the pole, didn't stay there very long, barely made it through the first turn. That dropped him back to the rear of the field, worked his way back up. He, too, got hurt by the guys that beat them to pit road. The 24 is going to be very close on fuel as well. And remember, if there is a restart, 24 car not very good on restarts. He spins the tires, Dave. The 88, a, a favorite of the duck-in strategy as well. He came in with leader Robbie Gordon, or the guy who became the leader. And they should be able to make it to the end. They haven't talked a lot about fuel conservation. So, DJ, keeping it on the track, making it good. Marty? Ryan Newman, in course of his backup car, we saw the accident in Countdown to Green Friday here in practice. But this backup car finished second here last year. A little tight, one, two, and nine, and six laps short on the fuel. That's going to hurt him later on. Michael Walter back there in the uh, 14th position. He can make it all the way on fuel. That air pressure adjustment, Michael came on the radio, said Slugger, that was the perfect call last time. Bill? Mark Martin has a great car and he had a great run, but you never know from where he is on the track, back in traffic. And that traffic is hurting the performance of his race car. He's tight on the rights and the lefts. They did an air pressure adjustment, track bar adjustment on the radio to Mark. Nice and smooth. Go get some more. Ron Fellows has some work to do at Sonoma. He went from 22nd to 7th near the end of the race. Right now he's running the 16th position. No change on his last stop. Just four tires and fuel, Dave. He's good to go on gas. Just check with Jimmy Fennig. There was a crew chief for the 97 car of Kurt Busch. If they saved correctly, they'll be okay on fuel. It is a little bit better as far as handling goes than it was before. Marty? Jeremy Mayfield said he's loose on the throttle when he gets back on the gas, and Wally might tell you that's not a very good thing here, but he's having a great run. Started 40th up to 18th. The last time he took a provisional at Watkins Glen, he finished third that day, Matt. Elliot Sadler running back in the 19th position, just working on that race car all day. The last stop, an air pressure adjustment. It has helped him a little bit, but not enough, Bill. Not exactly a great day for Bill Elliott, barely hanging on inside the top 20, running 20th on the track. His only win of the Bush Series came here in 1993 when he was driving for himself. Of course, his first Winston Cup win was the road course at Riverside back in 83. Matt? Bill, what a battle it's been for Terry Labonte today. Four Bush wins, but never a Winston Cup win here at the Glen. Earlier in the race, he lost power steering. They haven't gotten 
in the back. They've also been trying to work on that race car, which has been tight. So there's Terry Labonte running in 21st position as we take you about uh, halfway through the field. Now, Bobby Labonte, remember, did not get under the caution, came in under the green. We said it was going to cost him a bunch. Boy, it has. He's 28th position trying to get by Ricky Craven for 27. And some of these cars are going to have to stop, but the best that Labonte can do is probably a top 20. Yeah. He is 28.9 seconds behind leader Robbie Gordon. And Tony Stewart is behind him by another three positions. Tony's back in 31st place, 37 and a half seconds behind the leader. There's Tony racing there with Kenny Wallace for 30th place. It has not worked out for them today. Robbie Gordon is out in front, trying to become the fourth driver to win both road course races in a single season. Subway presents NASCAR Winston Cup Racing from Watkins Glen, live on NBC. The Richard Childress teammates, Robbie Gordon and Kevin Harvick, hold the top two spots after a shuffle of pit strategy in which their teams made a brilliant call and got them on pit road just as a caution was coming out. Legal stops got them ahead of a lot of other guys. Now Gordon is out in front by 1.8 seconds over Kevin Harvick. Uh, Robbie Gordon trying to become the fourth driver to double on road courses. Went on more than one Winston Cup road course in the same year. Jeff Gordon did it here in Watkins Glen and out at Sears Point in 98 and 99. Rusty Wallace at Riverside in Watkins Glen in 87. And Tim Richmond at Riverside in Watkins Glen in 86. And there you see our Napa Field summary. Eight leaders, eight lead changes, five cautions, and 12 caution laps. And only one car out. And these guys might be a couple of more caution laps to be able to make it on fuel. Tell you what, that, those target cars, Casey Mears is really, really fast. Casey Mears is doing a really good job. This is his first time here. Yep. He's doing a very good job today. First time here in any kind of racing right. vehicle. He did not run here in the NASCAR Bush Series. Bush Series stopped coming here before Casey got to it last season. That's Casey in the 41. Scott Pruitt behind him in the 39 car has won five of seven Trans Am Series races so far this season. He's the top running ringer so far, so if you voted for Pruitt, so far, you're doing well in our race talk poll of earlier. But the question is, can these guys go the distance? Yeah. On fuel. There's Scott Pruitt. 43-year-old, originally from Sacramento, California, ran most of the 2000 NASCAR Winston Cup season for people. Oh, his hood's popping open. Yeah, sure is. He has a hood pin missing out of the front. He's going to make a move here on Casey. If that hood doesn't fly yeah, 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 around his windshield. All right, your championship leader, Matt Kenseth, lost a spot or two in the last couple of laps. Jeff Gordon was able to get by. Greg Biffle got by, and Dale Jarrett also got by, got by the 17 car. He's going backwards. And here's why. Whoa. Oh. Cooked it in a little bit too hot down there in turn one. Matt, good job to stay out of the gravel because yeah. that would have been disaster. Very good recovery. Yes. Black is good. It's the old saying at Watkins Glen. Black is good, that's the pavement. Green is bad, that's the grass. Blue is very bad, that's the guardrails. It was bad. And gravel is uh, disaster time. It's kind of like the guardrail. Yeah. Because you lose a lap. Remember we talked about when uh, Greg Biffle bumped Jeff Gordon out of the way in turn one, lap one. Well, Gordon finally caught up to Biffle to make the pass a couple of laps ago. Did Biffle make it easy? You yeah, tell let's me. Let's see. Uh, yes. Yeah, I would say that was, uh, sorry about that. Like, How about your championship leader there, Matty? Well, he wasn't trying to do an old Rusty Wallace move or anything. Basically, he radiated into Robbie Reiser that his brakes are starting to fade. That's not good. And I tell you, they use a tremendous amount of brakes here. And that's what put Rusty Wallace out of it. He lost his front brakes. That's why he ended up in the gravel earlier. Nothing going wrong for Robbie Gordon so far. He is now 15 laps away from the checkered flag here at Watkins Glen. NASCAR Winston Cup Racing from Watkins Glen, presented by Subway, is brought to you by Subway. Fresh baked sandwiches on fresh baked bread. Subway, eat fresh. By Dodge, you can take life as it comes or you can grab life by the horns. Dodge. By Circuit City. 
we're with you. And by Budweiser. The best things in life are the things that are true. Budweiser. Pace trucks out in front of the field here at Watkins Glen for the sixth time in the race. The gravel trap got another one. Todd Bodine. That would be the hometown driver from nearby Chemung, New York. In the National Guard Ford, turn one. Goes down the corner and looks like he got that wheel hop going. Yep, sure did. And he almost saved it. Just gets the front in the gravel just enough that he's unable to. See how it sinks down yeah. and just sticks there. Duck. Those traps are there for safety. They slow a car down tremendously when it gets off the course and keeps them from impacting the barrier. The problem is if you get hung in one, you are hung in one. Yeah. Like he is hung in one, that one. So the local favorite who made his uh, stops to get his double, what do you call it? Uh, where is that? A, a double cheese whammy hoagie in his hometown sub shop there before he came here. <laughs> he's, he's now going to have to savor that from his trip to Watkins Glen instead of his finish. He had pizza one night and a double cheese hoagie whammy or whatever the other night. All right, Kevin Harvick and Robbie Gordon said, are you going to stop? I don't think so. You want to stop? Uh, probably not. You know, but the caution might have saved some guys where fuel mileage is concerned. Bill, you were talking a lot of, a lot of uh, murmuring on pit road when that yellow came out. Well, I've got Gordon in the 24 and the 16 of Biffle and the 6 of Mark, and they all said, the crew chiefs, that they were right on the edge. They had all told their drivers to try and save fuel, that it was going to be very close, that all we need is a couple of caution laps or one caution lap. So if they are that close, this is what saves them. This could be the difference between the guys that came down under green that didn't take the yellow and the guys that had to wait and come around and pit under caution when uh, Rusty got stuck in the kitty litter out there. So we'll see what happens. You never know exactly in these road course races, but, man, it's going to be close on fuel. Mm. Marty? Well, I'll tell you, Bill, it also saved Jimmy Johnson as well as uh, Ryan Newman. Both of those cars very close on fuel. Uh, Chad Knauss came on the radio as soon as the caution came out and said, hey, we're in now, we're in our window. And then uh, Ryan Newman seen they actually were going to come down pit road anyway during this caution, but they decided to stay out and uh, risk it. I asked Matt Borland, can he definitely make it even with these laps? It depends on how many we get, but uh, this certainly helps. It is still going to be close because before they were six green flag laps short, and uh, that doesn't equal six caution flags. Laps. Johnny Benson going to give up 24th place to come in. Jeff Burton, Ricky Craven behind him. I was wondering who would be the first one to come in and say, hey, let's throw some fresh tires at it and see if we can gain some spots at the end of this thing. Going to be awfully hard to do. Might pick up five or six spots, but it will be almost impossible to get back to the front. Well, he wasn't at the front anyway. No, that Jeff Burton was about 26 spot. Matt? Paul Andrews is going to climb in through the passenger window. Jeff Burton had a problem under the green flag conditions. He could not get the car into first or second gear. Under caution, though, it would go into first and second. Paul's going to try to see what he can do inside the car. They left a tire carrier on the other side of the wall, so that way they would have the legal number of men over the wall, and Paul could work on that transmission during the entire stop to try to save time. As you can see, he did not leave the pits with the passenger. No. <laughs> you can't take equipment out of the pits. Yeah. More people. More people. Well, you're not supposed to, anyway. I think the passenger seat of the Wally's World car would be a little more comfortable than riding yeah. around laying on those roll bars, you think? So only a few stopping here under the caution. Everybody else hoping the yellow laps will give them enough fuel to make the finish. How about the leader, Dave? Check. We'll check in his pit, Allen, with uh, Kevin Hamlin, Robbie's crew chief. He told us, or he told you guys over the radio, that he was driving so slow the dipples may still be on the tires. Has he saved enough fuel now to run fast? Yeah, I believe. I believe. I believe we should be fine on the fuel. Uh, ever ever since that last caution, we've just been kind of cruising, and we're we really kind of thought we could make it from there anyway. So I, th I believe he's really saved plenty. So we should be fine here on out with the similar wireless Chevy. All right, so if Kevin Harvick does mount a charge, guys, he has enough fuel to fend him off. Marty? Oh, Dave, if there's one guy who really wants to make a charge, it's Dale Earnhardt Jr. You've had arguably the fastest car all day, Tony Urey Jr. Uh, what do you think here? Can you catch those guys in the front? Uh, it's going to be awful tough. I mean, Robbie's a good road course driver. Uh, I think we can get the two Ganassi cars. We're not sure if we, you know, we got two teammates up there. They're going to try to help out each other as much as they can, but, uh, you know, our hats off to Dale Jr. really stepping up his program and uh, all the people that's really helped us to get to this level in a road course. It really helps. Have you advised him as to the blocking you'll expect in uh, this last little run? No, I just told him to do what he's been doing all day. He's been coming up through the, he's coming up through the field twice a day. So, uh, you know, I just told him to stay out of the sand traps, you know, just kind of 
take it easy and take what we can get here. And, uh, you know, if he gets a win, that'll be tremendous. But, uh, you know, we're just going to take what we can get here. And the one thing they did say, get a good restart, Junior. Matty? And Jimmy Elledge, are you now good to go? Well, I think so. You know, uh, I'll calculate say we're close, but it's still going to be close. So uh, we just, we're close enough now that we got no choice but to gamble for it because either we're going to have a good position or finish in the back either way. So we're going to give her a whirl, see what happens. And they're a teammate in the 39. They are close, but they're going for it, Dave. Todd Barry, our crew chief for Kevin Harvick. Got enough fuel to race, Robbie Gordon? Yeah, we got enough fuel. You know, we run this whole last run here. Robbie, ourselves, just kind of conserving fuel because we knew there would be a caution or two for the end. There's probably a couple more cautions. So uh, got plenty of fuel to go good tires. Kevin Harvick and they're racing hard. It'll be fun. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, I think he's telling us to watch, Alan. This, this is the most important part of the race right here. If this is the last restart, these guys have got to be on top of the game because if you're going to make a move, this is the best time to do it. You've got to try to snooker the guy that you're racing right now. So this is real important right here. The restart line you see has been moved around the corner from where it was last year. Robbie got a good restart. Here comes Scott Pruitt. Pruitt's going to try to make a run on Harvick. Harvick tried to block him, was not able to. He gets position. Oh, oh contact. Got in too heavy. But eight tires are better than four. Yes, sir. <laughs> Used Kevin to keep him on the track. That's what I was talking about. That's, this is the time. This is the easiest time to make that pass. And I thought Junior... Excuse me. <clears throat> There's that frog. Here, here. Junior should have capitalized on that. I think you're going to say, right? Almost. But they got boxed up. He got boxed up. He had to get out of the gas because those guys are basically wrecking in front of him. Appreciate your trooping on all day, BP. Well, that's quite all right. I thought Junior had position on Harvick, but not able to get by. Harvick wants some of those spots back. Let's see if the old chrome horn can. Let's see if he can distinguish between the two target cars, the one that hit him and the one that's right in front oh, of him. I think not he the can, same. Because one's got to get... Well, I don't know. Does Pruitt have yellow on the bumper? He shouldn't, no. No, because one's got yellow on the bumper because Casey Mears is a rookie. Uh, you know who's in the car ahead of you. Trust me. They, yeah. You keep that private score sheet? Absolutely. Let's see. I owe him one. He owes me one. Yeah, I owe these guys one. And they're right in front of me. Yeah. This is all the race for second, third, fourth, and fifth. Here's Harvick on Casey Mears. Yeah. This is the old eight tires is better than well. Yeah, no, Harvick, that was, a, that was a great move on Harvick's part. I think Harvick has a better car than these two guys in a target car, so see if he can get back up to Scott Brook. And I think Casey Mears realized that uh, he better back off and let him have that position. Look at Junior. He was all over the place in the S's. Jeff Gordon closed it up on him when Junior lost Gordon. a little momentum. Right there. Gordon for fifth place. Wow. That was strong. That was a strong move. Jeff Gordon really drove that car in there very deep. Remember that Jeff Gordon started on the pole in this race, but in the first corner of the first lap, got bumped from behind by Greg Biffle and spun out, and all the way back to 42nd place. He's just gotten back up into the top five. That's a remarkable day. I'm impressed. That'll change here when he crosses the start-finish line. His high position will become six, uh, fifth. Watkins Glen. Robbie Gordon out in front of Scott Pruitt. Kevin Harvick, Casey Mears, Jeff Gordon, and Dale Jr. Two of the top three in the championship running back to back in fifth and sixth. Matt Kenseth is running in 11th position. Heard some concern about his brakes before that last caution. That's going to cost Pruitt right there. He caught the slower car of Rusty Wallace, who's going through the S's there, and there you go. Harvick's trying Harvick's to take a look. In a pounce. That's what I'm saying. If you go through the S's and you have to lift just a little bit, boy, the guys behind you really make up a lot of ground. Scott Pruitt, one of the five ringers in the race, the road course regulars. Do you know that as far as the ringers are concerned, the last time a non-Winston Cup regular won a NASCAR Winston Cup road course race was 19... 73. When Mark Donahue did it at Riverside, California. And Greg Biffle missed the interloop that time. Had to stop back there and give up the eighth position. He's going to give it up when he comes to pit road for his stop and go penalty. The interloop was made back in the early 1990s. And Fellows is off in the sand. Did he get through? Yeah, but he might get stuck in the mud. 
up. He's going to make it. So much for a good finish. Uh oh, Casey Mears. Was in fourth place. Not anymore. These guys are trying a little bit harder now. A little bit harder than they have been all race. Get down to the end of the race. You gotta get everything you can out of these cars right now. And the brakes are worn and the tires are worn, and you're trying to get more out of it than you were before. Yep, track is slick. Bobby Labonte on Casey Mears there. That's all the way back for 22nd place now from fourth for Casey. You can see those rear tires are getting very worn on the 41 car. Gets back on the throttle and the back end wants to kick out. Let me just mention on the Greg Biffle thing, that inner loop there, the chicane in the back straightaway. If you miss that, if you go straight ahead on the old part of the racetrack and don't come to a complete stop before you exit that part of the racetrack, then you're going to get brought in for a stop and go penalty. NASCAR says Biffle did not stop completely and take his own penalty back there, so he's being black flagged and things are going to get worse for him. Robbie Gordon is out in front. As we're down to eight laps to go at Watkins Glen. How did he get here? Well, he was running just a couple of spots behind Rusty Wallace coming into turn 10 of 11 on the track when Rusty spun off track in front of him. He made a quick move onto pit road after the leaders had gone by and got his pit stop in before NASCAR put out the caution flag. Then when the pit stop cycled back around, Robbie Gordon out in front. Scott Pruitt right behind him, second place. Ditto for him. Made the dive onto pit road just when Rusty Wallace spun, but before the caution came out and closed the pit lane, now he's passed a couple of cars to move up to second. And Kevin Harvick in the same boat as his Richard Childress teammate, Robbie Gordon. Plus, don't forget, Harvick coming back from that scary pit fire back at lap 22. And he came down pit road under the green. They had a little fuel spill, and uh, a spark or a burning piece of rubber out of his brake system ignited that fuel. Everyone okay, and Harvick continued on. But a very scary moment there. Jeff Gordon, how he got here? Well, we said it just a second ago. Bumped from the lead in the first corner of the first lap. And his crew has just kept on hammering all day on their pitch strategy. And Gordon passing cars through traffic at one point in the race, about one a lap. Just after he got spun out. A lot like what they did last week at the Brickyard. Had not given up and aren't in the fourth spot right now. championship picture won't change a whole lot if they finish as they're running now because Matt Kenseth is inside the top 10 in ninth position and Gordon here pressuring Kevin Harvick for third. See the scoring serial on Jeff just a steady climb to the front. Boy he whoa boot there to excuse me Kevin Harvick. I'm in a hurry. That was close. Five championship points. Here comes Dale Jr. Here's a guy who has gotten off course the last couple of times. We've seen him here at Watkins Glen, struggled at this racetrack. He led a good chunk of the race today. And although the track position didn't work out in his favor, he was leading when Rusty Wallace spun and had already passed the entrance to pit road when the caution came out, so he couldn't take advantage of that same strategy. They've recovered very nicely to fourth place. I think Tony Urey Jr. was said it correctly when he said, Dale Jr. has really stepped up his program on the road course. Good job. Nice top 10 for Ward Burton, huh, Dave? How about that, Alan? How'd he get there? Well, he had the same duck-in strategy as the leader, Robbie Gordon, did. And as I mentioned before, he's kept the thing on the road course all day. Best finish here before, 19th. He can keep a top 10 now. What a great day for Ward. And of course, this is a team that um, is likely to be splitting up at season's end. Ward saying at Indianapolis last week that he and Bill Davis had agreed they might want to look at other options for next season, even though they have a contract together for 2004. I spoke with Ward earlier this weekend. He said, it's kind of good that the word's out there. Marty, what's going on with Jimmy Johnson? Well, let's talk about how he got here at BP, and it actually happened yesterday. Now, normally you put the race plugs in the car, at least the 48 car does, on Saturday afternoon. Well, they got behind yesterday during happy hour, so they never did that. Danny Emmerich, when he came in this morning, replaced the race plugs, put them in, and found that there was water in the number one cylinder. Had he done it yesterday when he normally did it, they would have not have found that problem because you only find that when the engine cools down. So their mistake yesterday allowed them to race today. Had that
that not happen, they would have most likely blown up on the first or second lap of today's race. Of course, Jimmy Johnson had to change engines this morning, so they dropped to the back of the field. The one engine per weekend rule, but a nice recovery by them to come up to sixth place. Jimmy Johnson fourth in the championship standings coming into the race. Well, I guess the question becomes now, do the leaders have enough fuel to see the checkers? That's a great question, Alan. And it's one they're asking themselves down here, too. My guess is, Bill, some of these guys will run out. I don't know who, but somebody in the top ten will probably run out. The funny thing down here, Benny, is not only do you not know about your own car, but you don't know about the other guy either, you know? Yeah. So you're, you're hoping your guy is the guy that makes it, and the other guy is the one that didn't. Well, you got a couple second-place finishes here. Very, very good at this road racing thing. How does Robbie Gordon save fuel? I wish I knew. I don't know how you say the year. Well, watch, watch the countdown next week because that's the feature, believe it or not. Oh, okay, well, I'll, I'll do that. Do it as you know, I think the biggest thing is you don't turn the RPMs that you would normally turn, especially on a road course. You short shift. So instead of shifting at, you know, 9,000, you shift at 8,700. And But you've got to be careful because if you short shift, you're going to go slower. And the guys that are behind you are going to catch you. So it's very, very difficult to save fuel. How about it, Dave? Well, I wanted to ask you, too. I'm right at the point where these guys shut down going into turn one, and it seems to me like Robbie's just letting off real soon and coasting in there and breaking. Well, there again, he's, he's trying to use less RPM, and that's something you can do here. I don't know how you do it on a, you know, on an oval, other than backing off really the same thing, but it, you just got to be careful. He's looking in the mirror every single corner. Every time he comes out of a corner, every time he goes in a corner, he's looking in the mirror to see if Scott Pruitt is gaining. Believe me, if he thinks Pruitt's gaining, and he's going to go back after those RPMs because he can't afford to be caught. I spoke with Bobby earlier this weekend at Watkins Glen talking about... Three laps to go. Just keep doing what you're doing. Plenty room. That's Crew Chief Kevin Hamlin there talking about his road racing skills. And I said, you know, where do you beat these guys? Why are you such a good road racer? And he said, I don't know why I'm such a good road... Uh, I don't know where I'm beating them on the racetrack, but I can tell you that I think my road racing advantage comes from driving a freer race car, a car that's sideways more than some other people. He said that hurt my oval track racing when I first came to Winston Cup because on an oval track, I was driving a car that was hung out sideways too much. But on a road course, that's a good thing, and I'm not afraid of it. And he's still using that curb back going in the interloop or bus stop. How about Tony Stewart? Came in and uh, topped off the fuel there at lap 59. He is charging back through the field. He was lower than 32nd at that point with 30 laps to go. And just took over the 12th spot, 12th yeah. spot. Kurt Busch and Michael Waltrip there. He's actually picked up the 12th. And that's a team, they, remember, they stopped and got that fuel, Allen, and they definitely could have made it to the end. They were really disappointed to see that last call show. Yeah. And, of course, Tony's another one who had to start at the back of the field because they had an engine problem that we documented. Ended up uh, working all night and chartering an airplane to fly an engine up here from North Carolina and started at the back of the field. And it's been an all-day scramble for the 20 car to get to the front of the pack. You guys don't look now, but it looks to me like I see Mark Martin trying to get on the inside. It looks to me like Jeff Gordon has closed up right on the back bumper of Scott Pruitt. Well, he has. Jeff Gordon was seven-tenths of a second faster than Robbie Gordon last time in here. But Robbie, we, we, we believe, is in safe fuel mode. Right. But Jeff looks like he's getting through the essence as good, if not better, than anybody. He makes a lot of time up on these cars. Coming by the white flag next time. There's the gap, first to second to third. Going to be Scott Pruitt's best ever NASCAR Winston Cup finish if the fuel holds out for him and he finishes second. How about it, Matt? Alan, they have calculated, recalculated, and tried it one more time. They are very, very close. Jerry Schweitz has a can of fuel. Greg Posney has a can of starter fluid. But they are not going to come in. They are going for it. And remember, they are not racing for points, just pride. If he didn't run out right there in that last corner, yeah. it's too late. They may as well put that stuff away. Yeah. And, you know, Jeff Gordon was He's right out of gas. 24 out of gas. Well, that's right. I thought he was, he was right behind him last lap. Oh, man, just after he went by the pit entrance. So how much can he sputter around the course on the last lap? And how many positions might it cost him? He's still running. He ran out 
in one spot. Yeah. And how about the leader, Robbie Gordon? Half a lap now from the checkered flag. Does he have the gasoline to make it to the strike? Robbie Gordon seeking his third career NASCAR Winston Cup win in his second of 2003. The dive onto pit road as Rusty Wallace spun in front of him at lap 51 may turn out to be the key to victory today. It's all about track position these days, and he got it then by being able to pit before pit road was closed for that caution flag. Coast from here. Yep. Second win of the season for Robbie Gordon, the road king. Today at Watkins Glen, he wins the serious satellite radio at the Glen. Look at Dale Jr. We're right. Oh, Jeff Gordon spins off the last corner. Jeff Gordon is spun coming to the checkered flag. He's not going to make it to the start-finish line unless he can fire it up. And look at all the cars coming by him and all the positions he's losing. Did he spin or did he get hit? Uh, he might have gotten hit. He was, because he, was out of, he was out of fuel coming off turn 10, right. turn 11, and whoever was behind him just couldn't have just ran right up the back of him. I think it was, he was behind him at, at one time. I looked there, wasn't, there wasn't Junior that hit him. It might have been... Might have been Harvick or the 48 car, I'm not sure which. Okay. But Junior had already gotten by him on the back stretch. Okay. Robbie Gordon has won at Watkins Glen. Hang out of that wheel, Robbie. <laughs> <laughs> and Jeff Gordon is going to finish in 33rd place. Here comes through the corner. He's out of gas, but he's trying to keep uh -huh. the car going to get to the line. And there they make contact. And he once again moves over from the 29. And around he goes. It cost Harvick a spot. Jimmy Johnson went by him. Was he trying to block him or just trying to get out of the way? I think he's trying to get out of the way, and Harvick, well, obviously couldn't get around the left, so he turned back to the right, but in the meantime, he was all up in the back of Jeff Gordon. And the driver and crew chief of the 29 car have been called to the big red truck to have a little meeting. I'll tell you what. You know, the way these races have become, talking about the pit, pit strategy and the track position, you've got to have a perfect race to win, and that includes perfect luck. Yeah. And what a great move it was by Robbie Gordon to dive to pit road and get that splash of fuel when Rusty Wallace spun off in front of him, Dave. Well, Kevin Hamlin with us now. Kevin, it has not escaped us that your spotters did a pretty good job of getting him in here when uh, Rusty Wallace spun. You want to put all the credit there, or you want to give a little to Robbie, too? Well, uh, he did a great job. You know, he knew what we were looking for. We had to, we had the laps on the dash, and he knew where we could go, where, what was a, a possibility anyway. But uh, we uh, weren't really sure. We heard the, heard the guy over the loudspeaker yelling, oh, trouble, and uh, we decided we were going to take a chance and dive in and see if we couldn't. We, you know, we were, we were trying to decide if we were going to gamble on that lap or not anyway, so uh, that's about the only chance we had because, to tell you the truth, I kind of messed up earlier. We were supposed to pit on lap 20, and uh, I thought we were coming by to get lap 19, going to pit the next lap, and we actually were supposed to pit the lap Harvick pitted when he caught on fire. So I, I kind of messed up earlier, but uh, thankfully we were, we were able to overcome that little incident. And uh, I'd like to thank God for a great day and safe race. All right, and like you said, Alan, gosh, perfect luck, huh? Yep. I'll be curious to hear from Robbie and Victory Lane. Did he make that call? Did he just hang the right turn onto pit road? My guess is he did. Yeah. How about uh, you saw Jeff Gordon there? A little flush. How about a burnout? How about a burnout? Come okay. On. There's the burnout. <laughs> very, very neatly across the start finish line. That's a pretty tight burnout. Yeah, pretty good. Yeah, but if he doesn't burn the right rear tire off it like Harvick did in Indianapolis, he hasn't topped his teammate. Oh, he's trying to. Yeah, he is. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So Robbie Gordon will try and drive through his uh, self-induced fog to victory lane. Meantime, Jeff Gordon crashing off the last corner after he and Kevin Harvick are tangled up. Yeah, I mean... And while Jeff watched the field come motoring by him to the checkers, Kevin Harvick has come home with a fourth-place finish. Well, Kevin, first of all, tell us about the contact with you and Jeff Gordon coming to the car, to the uh, checkered flag. Uh, he just, I think he ran out of gas, and I got into the back of him, and 
then he uh, um, got sideways, and, and I hit him and spun him out. But, uh, you know, if you're out of gas, the best thing to do is get out of the groove. Tell me about early on in the race, the fire on pit road and what you thought happened there and how you guys made up the track position after that. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't uh, know there was any fire until they told me. I didn't, I didn't see it, but uh, it's a good day for Jim Goodwin's car. Uh, I just, uh, I, feel, I feel bad today. I uh, don't have much energy, and, and just to come home fifth is a tribute to this uh, Goodrich team and everybody. And I want to congratulate Robbie and his whole RCR gang for winning this race. A win last week, a top five here at Watkins Glen. Alan? Robbie Gordon is one. We'll talk with him in the winner's circle when we come back to Watkins Glen. Back at Watkins Glen, Robbie Gordon is today's winner. And Chevy congratulates Robbie and the number 31 Monte Carlo. Robbie will tell you the only thing that comes close to Monte Carlo's reputation on the track is its reputation on the street. More champions depend on Chevy. We'll be there. Bill? Robbie Gordon sitting patiently in victory lane, now taking off the helmet, relaxing after a tough Sunday afternoon. The helmet comes out. And Robbie Gordon sweeps the road course races, earlier a win in Sonoma, California, and today, with the Fire Department City of New York logo on the hood of his car, he pulls into victory lane at Watkins Glen. <laughs> Crew Chief Kevin Hamlin is here. Here's his car owner, Richard Childress. Kevin Harvick was here a second ago to shake hands while Robbie was still in the car. Tell me about coming on to pit road after Rusty got stuck in the sand pit. Well, if you look over here, we got some numbers on our dash. And we knew we were going to be close. We came in about two laps earlier and we thought, kind of hoping we get some cautions later on. Uh, as soon as Rusty spun, Kevin and me were on the radio talking. He's like, come now, come now. That was the call. Uh, we needed that track position. Track position is so important. Uh, I'll be honest, the first half of the race just kind of saved my brakes, saved the car. I don't know if we had the best car today, but we ended up winning the race. And uh, that's what it takes to have a team. How quick did you have to react to get on the pit road in that situation, Robbie? A lot of guys aren't ready for that. Well, I saw Rusty there right in front of me. He was, I think, two cars in front of me at that point. And I saw Rusty lock up his inside tire. And about the time he did that, I'm like, all right, Rusty's in the gravel. He's like, pit now, pit now. It's like, all right. So we came in and uh, kind of stuck to our strategy. So I'm, I'm real pleased there on the single wireless team. Very happy that we can win for FDNY and Special Olympics. So uh, great day for us. I get the sense for you, Robbie. This one might be a little more special. Well, you know, the other one, maybe we deserve to win a little bit more. Uh, this one, we just had our cards all lined up. We had our strategy planned and um, got a great race team that prepare really good race cars. And uh, that's what it takes sometimes. You don't have to be the fastest car to win every time. Special Olympics and the Fire Department of New York on the hood. Yeah, it's, it's great. You know, um, a lot of money's going to them this weekend. Uh, 50 grand each one. So um, very, very pleased to have a, a sponsor like Singular Wireless that stands up and supports other groups besides just their racing program. It's a great sponsor to have and um, just having a lot of fun. Uh, you got to tell me, did your ride with Wally Dolan back yesterday in his car contribute to your success here today? <laughs> I got to be honest, Wally kind of showed me how to get around here. Without Wally, um, I don't know if I could have done it. All right, congratulations. He sweeps the road course races in 2003. Dave? Well, Bill, Dale Jr. had a pretty good day. First road course laps led in a Winston Cup car. Uh, did you have fun? I mean, third wasn't what you wanted, but did you have a good day? I had a lot of fun. The car drove real good. We tested here and worked real hard to get there and get the car back competitive. And a lot of hard work paid off. Uh, wasn't looking too good there when my last restart. Uh, was sitting about 20th. And just had to drive real hard to get up through there and warm my car out. Didn't have anything for the leaders. Uh, and uh, just try to stay out there, stay out of trouble, and, and uh, got a great finish to be proud of. Earlier in the day when you had the lead junior, did you feel like it might be your day? I just was happy being up front. You know, it's a lot easier running up front. Um, no, easier, easier not to make mistakes and, and uh, just take it easy. And uh, it's, it's a great view, too. But, uh, you know, it's great to lead some laps and get some points. You know, that was important. And I don't know, you know, I had a great car, and it was great to run up front. And uh, it's good to show that our capability and our, our, our pure ability, I guess, to be able to run that well on road courses and kind of getting toward that total package of a team that we're wanting to get. They showed that today, guys. You know, his dad in all of his starts here, his best finish was third here three times. Junior finishes third here today. Marty?
Dave, a career best. Winston Cup finished second for Scott Pruitt today at Watkins Glen. Tell me, yeah, you can dance a little bit if you want to. Tell me about diving onto pit road there with uh, all those other guys. How quick of a decision was that? That was very quick, but it was right in our window. And I mean, and, and all the target guys did a terrific job. I mean, we had a strategy that, that we thought we could play. It was an aggressive one, and it all depended on those yellows. And, and they happened to work out exactly the way we wanted to. Unfortunately, we pitted so soon at the end that we had to conserve fuel. They're going, go after Robbie, but but you got to conserve fuel at the same time. And we could about pace him, but we couldn't catch him. If you would have gotten a restart, could you have caught him? I mean, it seemed like all you needed was a little track position on him. The thing that a restart would have done would let me run full fuel, because then I could have gone for it. But you know what? I'm happy with second. Not that you're ever happy with second, but um, career best for us. And for the Target guys, Ganassi guys, they worked real hard getting this, this fourth car here. And, and thanks to them, and hi to my family at home. Miss you. Big run for Scott Pruitt today. Comes home second. Dave? Matt? And Jeff Gordon's walk out of the infield care center. Jeff, first off, what happened? Harvick said that he knew you were out of gas, but felt like you should have been out of the way. Well, I was trying to get out of his way, and uh, when you're out of gas, you don't have many options. And, um, you know, it's our fault for running out of gas, but uh, I felt like, you know, he, he was fighting a little bit too hard because it's pretty easy to pass me. What a great drive, though, from the back almost all the way back up to the front. Doesn't mean anything now, though. Uh, you know, that, that was one of the hardest I've ever driven a car. These last two weeks have taken a lot out of me and, and this race team. And last week we saw the results, and unfortunately today we didn't. Any conversations with the medical team, Jeff? Yeah. I mean, this is ridiculous. I, I'm telling you, 100 people could have gotten there before I, I got there. I mean, I, I, you know, I shouldn't say anything because uh, it wasn't that they didn't get to me very fast. I mean, I was fine, but... You should have seen the drive trying to get to the hospital. I mean, we, we were in bumper-to-bumper -bumper traffic in the, in the ambulance trying to get there. Well, the good news is he's okay, Dave. Well, Jimmy Johnson uh, raced twice here now. Twice has had to go to the back, had to go to the back, and twice has come through for today. How'd that feel? This is, uh, this is like a win for the Lowe's team to be able to have a day like we did today. Um, you know, sometimes not being the fastest car is going to pay off for you. It's just being consistent and fast enough. And you know, I've got a lot to learn on the road courses. This year's been a struggle for me, and I've been able to uh, learn in the race and do what I need to do. And luckily we had a good enough car to, you know, I didn't screw it up enough in happy hour yesterday. <laughs> we left it the same and came into today, and I really changed my lines and changed some stuff around and, and picked up some speeds. So a great day for the Lowe's team. And the way that things started shaking down there at the end, uh, you know, I was content with six. And then, you know, I see guys slamming and banging, and I uh, look like Jeff ran out of fuel, and, and a 29 got in the back of him, and I got by both of those guys. So great day for us in points, terrible day for my teammate. Uh, so kind of mixed emotions, but very happy and proud of the Slows team. All right. Hey, Marty, I think you got a guy who's also proud of what they did today. Yeah, he's one, also one of those guys you got to say, how did you, you get up there? Well, uh, Frank and him made some great calls on pit road. We got up there by pitting a little bit earlier than some others. At the same time, they made a lot of improvements on the car. The car was pretty good, and... Uh, Really happy for the CAT team because everybody worked hard this weekend. We improved the car a bunch on Friday. We struggled Saturday and happy hour, but they made some good calls today. They made the car better today, and that's what the team's all about. He doesn't like road courses very often, but he said, you know what? When I have a good car like that, it's a lot of fun. Alan? Let's check the finishing results from today's race at Watkins Glen. Robbie Gordon with his second win of 2003, sweeping the road courses this season. Now see Harvey came across in fifth spot. Dale Jarrett, another top ten. Maybe look they can at, build off that. And look at Kenta. How about that? Back in there at eight spot. Tony Stewart came back to 11. Bobby Labonte back to 14th after the strategy just didn't fall right for them today. All these cars on the lead lap. Still haven't seen Jeff Gordon. Because all these cars, once again, are still on the lead lap. Casey Mears was running in the top five, got off the track there in the late going, wound up all the way back in 22nd. Well, we have one car that was out today. And Greg Bipple, you know, was black flag for not stopping over in the chicane. He finishes 31st, and Jeff Gordon, 33rd, last car on the lead lap. Ron Fellows and Boris said were off the track at the end. The only car officially retired from the race was Sterling Marlins that went out on the first lap with an engine failure. Talking about Matt Kenseth winding up with that strong finish today. This was down in turn one late in the race. Now this could have been disaster. If he would have gotten the gravel over there, if he would have been just over about another three or four feet BP, that really could have ended his day. Because he would have been a lap down, finishing no better than 34th. 
Junior closes some ground. The lead was 286 before this race. It's now 258 for Kenseth Overdale Jr. See Kevin Harvick up a couple of spots at the expense of Michael Waltrip and Bobby Labonte. And Robbie Gordon's win moves him into the top 10 at the expense of Rusty Wallace, who spun off course and falls out of NASCAR's top 10. Robbie Gordon celebrating his fourth NASCAR Winston Cup win in pretty fine style. A nice, neat, neat, tidy burnout at the start-finish line. Back with more at Watkins Glen in just a minute on NBC. Looking ahead to next weekend, the action moves to TNT. Saturday, it's NASCAR Busch Series racing, followed by Winston Cup Happy Hour. Starting at 1.30 Eastern Time. Then next Sunday, Winston Cup Racing from Michigan, beginning with Discover Card Countdown to Green at 1.30 Eastern Time. A little race summary on your top three. Eight leaders, eight lead changes. Today, Robbie Gordon led the most laps, 30 of the 90 in the race. And only the one car out of the race, Sterling Marlin falling out at lap number one. The caution flags, six. A couple of, couple of those caution flags came at a perfect time for Robbie Gordon, Scott Pruitt. Show you how we got the things the way we did through the day today. Tony Stewart, one of the many, getting set to go on an afternoon when rain threatened. Benny and Wally had to duck the incoming jets. And turn one, lap one didn't work out well for the pole sitter, Jeff Gordon. No, it did not. Greg Bimple got in there. It was just a little bit too hot on cold tires, locked up the front tires. Unfortunately, Jeff got the worst of it. This is later in lap one. Four car makes contact with Kyle Petty. They kind of bump, and Kyle Petty almost hit on into the wall. Pit stop under the green at lap 22. Scary moment for Kevin Harvick's team. Rubber from the car is on fire. They spill a little gasoline. Everyone is okay. You see the fireman right on top, though it did take him a second to get that blaze under control. Then Kevin gets bumped by John Andretti and bumps the kill switch that you're supposed to hit in the event of a stuck throttle on his steering wheel. Takes him a minute to regroup and get back going. Loses a lot of track position. Yankees didn't have a very good day here at the racetrack. Don't know how they did baseball. Christian Fittipaldi got bumped by Steve Park and crashed. Though he did return to finish the race in 40th position. Tony Raines gets tangled up on the back straightaway and turned into the guardrail. He was okay, would end up finishing the race, but after repairs, he was in 41st position. Robbie Gordon, Boris said, same place, back straight away. Nice save by Boris, but it cost him his track position and some damage to his car's left front. Rusty Wallace skids off into the pit at lap 51, just before the entrance to pit road. All these cars dive in before the caution comes out and closes the pit road. Winning move there by Robbie Gordon and his crew. Jimmy Spencer sent for the loop-de-loop. -loop. Kenny Wallace bumped from behind. Same thing. They both continued. No caution flag there. Then Boris said had some left front issues. One of the road course ringers wound up finishing in 39th place after the problems that we saw on a couple of occasions. Todd Moran with a spin into the gravel pit brought out the last caution of the race. Might have given some of these guys that finished up front the fuel margin they needed to make it to the checkered flag. And in the end, Robbie Gordon pulling off the win while behind him... Jeff Gordon runs out of fuel, gets bumped by Kevin Harvick, and Gordon winds up coming to rest shy of the checkered flag, and he finishes way back in the field in 33rd position. The quick call to pit road at lap 51, the difference in today's win. That was the key. Marty? Guys, they're going to uh, transport Christian Fittipaldi to the infield care center here. He took in a lot of carbon monoxide. We saw the accident there uh, in the Yankees car and uh, didn't have any crush panels in the car today. Took in a whole lot of carbon monoxide. And they also uh, were asking him if he drank a lot during the day. And he actually said, I, I have not drank uh, very much at all during the day. So he did not rehydrate during the race. And they also are concerned about the carbon monoxide poisoning, perhaps. Yep. Alan? Another example why I'm not a big fan of going out there with wrecked race cars. Richard Childress spraying the champagne for a second weekend in a row. After and Kevin Robbie Harvick Gordon can't get the top off. <laughs> Kevin Harvick won at Indy. And Robbie Gordon is winning here at Watkins Glen. Gives RC a back-to-back -back set of victories. And they'll try for three in a row next week at Michigan. I better, like go Kevin down. Harvick. I better go down and help Robbie. <laughs> yeah, go help Robbie Gordon out down there. Try and take your credit. <laughs> Saturday, 1.30 Eastern on TNT. NASCAR Bush Series Racing for Michigan. Then next Sunday, NASCAR Winston Cup Racing. Coverage begins at 1.30 Eastern. Discover card countdown to green.
And NBC next, the AVP Nissan Series continues with the Manhattan Beach Open presented by Bud Light. Little volleyball coming at you. Robbie Gordon struggling more to get the cork off that champagne bottle than he did in the last few laps of this race as he won by two and a third seconds over Scott Pruitt. You've been watching NASCAR on NBC.